three plays, we cast him. I am Deltheus. We got AV Ultima with us. What's up, man? Hey, guys. What's up? Good to be here. So give me a moment. We are actually trying to broadcast to the Steam store page to do a little bit of advertising because Tooth and Tail is on sale at the moment. Only $5. So if you have any friends or family who have been kind of on the fence about trying the game out, now is definitely the time. And we are going to ramble a little bit while I make sure this is happening correctly. Anyone can know. Let me see. I believe this is how I did it last time. Always show live status. Record video. I guess we could do that. Let me see. Is it working? Maybe community hub. Send me a link. Or what is your... It should just be on the Steam store page, but I must not be broadcasting right. Broadcasting. Anyone can watch my games. I believe that's how I did it last time. I might have to experiment with this. Maybe we will broadcast status, not broadcasting. How about we, waiting for Deltheus' broadcast to start. Should be starting. How do I start it? Steam's not responding. It's a good day to work out some kinks. Yeah, yeah. Well, well tomorrow we want to have the uh, first day of the Tooth and Tail 2020 Championship broadcasted on mm -hmm. Steam. So yeah, this is definitely a good chance to make sure okay now it says broadcast status broadcasting so that's good and it says I'm live now it just says waiting for my broadcast to start oh oh there it is I think I think we're getting close yeah all right we're live now cool 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 and I think I actually want to change my settings to not record video from all applications just from tooth and tail uh, I do see the stream. Uh, not on the... Well, I'm just at your stream live right now, so let me know when you want me to check the levels and I'll mute everything else. Okay. Uh, wait. Let's see. I think this is working. I think we're working now. Are we working now? Uh, I do see the stream, at least. On the Steam store page? Yes. Okay, cool. We are live. Awesome. Well, what's up? Anybody who's watching on Steam, hopefully the levels are okay. I've got AV Ultima casting with me. We've had a lot going on in Tooth and Tail this past week or so. I wanted to touch base and say hi. Unfortunately, last week I wasn't able to make the show. Uh, so I wanted to get in some replays today. Uh, the new patch just hit yesterday. A lot of big changes coming up. We had a Tier 3 build time reduction, which is pretty big. Moles, you probably like this one, AV. Mole Warrens, uh, right when you build the Mole Warren, the first mole immediately pops out now. So that's kind of crazy. That can uh, change up a lot of things in the early game. And yeah, I just wanted to come in and say hi tonight, guys, and go over some of the previous patch replays that I had piled up. Try to get some of these guys some camera time. And tomorrow we are starting with the Tooth and Tail Championship 2020. It's an event, I, I just tallied everyone up. I think over 50 people are actually in this event. And it's going to, it, it's played over three divisions. We got the beginner, intermediate, and premier leagues. And essentially the groups uh, within each division play each other round robin style until everybody's kind of racked up some points and from there we go into a more traditional like bracketed tournament i'm not sure if it's single or double limb i'll have to check and uh yeah it's it's gonna be fun so i'm hyped for that tomorrow night me and av ultima will be back here with a couple matches of the premier league i think we got mishi and d's on i have to check exactly who else is playing i know for a fact we've got mishi versus d's on we got lego man versus eel and one more that's slipping my mind, but uh, Dino vs. Weasel, that's what it was. So we got all that coming up tomorrow, and I think I've bought enough time. If, if you guys are in the Twitch chat, if you don't mind hopping over to the Steam store page and letting me know if the levels are okay. We're doing a little broadcast over there as well, but I think that's looking good. As far as I can tell, the stream is not on the store page, but it is in the community hub at least. Yeah, that's where I found it too. So I might have to ask Eel about that later. Let me see. If I go to Tooth and Tail, like, store page. See, last time there was, like, a thing that let you know, like, a stream was going on. 
maybe yeah I... typically it bumps the entire store page down and says that there's a broadcast going that you can watch yeah okay I've seen that. i'll have to ask you about it but we are at least broadcasting in the community hub so without further ado i guess we can go ahead and get started what do you think sure let me just get the yeah let's get that up be handy well <laughs> way too many windows open delphius oh man you're telling me <laughs> okay all right uh let me hop over to the replay section uh and we're at uh, zero one right yep give me one second here i might actually turn you up just a smidgen there we go okay okay cool i think we're all set and yeah let's get into it vincent versus bratmo game number one three two one go All right, in the bottom right, we've got Bratmo and his opponent to the top left, Vincent. So these guys playing some some crazy decks here. I like the tier three, I like the defense. Uh, these guys have a history of just kind of hopping on tooth and tail and, and playing silly compositions for each other uh, and for our amusement here. So kind of curious how this will play out. A little bit of a short map here. So I guess we just got to wait a minute and see what kind of builds these guys want to go for. You know, typically on these short maps, the artillery cannons can do quite the damage. You <laughs> you set the one up, and you essentially have half the map sort of set aside to yourself. Yeah, that'd be awesome if Vincent could take one of these forward grist mills here and then throw down that artillery cannon. The turret, the modern turrets actually build like really, really fast, so you might be able to help you know defend that building already with uh, with some MGs there. But eight farms so far. Uh, we we can hope. I, I would love to see some. I don't even necessarily think proxy art artillery because they have such a long range, right? Like if Vincent put one outside of his natural, I mean that would that would be putting the pressure on Bratmo. Oh, uh, you mean uh, Vincent could take? Oh, well, it couldn't now, but yeah, I can imagine him taking that <laughs> natural base and then placing something. Oh yeah, that that proxy. Yeah. Yeah, that would have been good. So eight farm doubles from both sides, pretty standard stuff. Let's see how these players want to continue the game from here scouting is very important as always yeah here comes Vincent all right all right I think he's he's gonna try to put our artillery up on that ledge I think that's the plan yeah that's like a perfect one tile area right there right next to his farms hey mass of stealth you're in the chat I, I'm gonna have you do some work look at the store page and let me know if the levels are okay and then furthermore I, I'm curious why we're not on the like, there's no notification for the store page, it's just on the community hub. Let me know if you know anything about that. Alright, first turret's going down there. Is Bratmo aware of that? Okay, he's not aware of it yet. So far, he's just trying to take his own expansion, maybe get out some chameleons, and... Meanwhile, Vincent has got a pack of lizards together. Really good to harass your opponent from multiple angles, and... Come on, save up for that artillery. No, just more lizards for now. There's an opportunity here for uh, Vincent to come in for a frontal attack, no defense, as that mill goes down. Yeah, Vincent moving in, gonna pick up a Warren, gonna pick up a pig, going for pig number two. Is he gonna get a pig number three? No, he's gonna buffer up. Unfortunately for Vincent, or for Bratmo, his units were not in the right spot. The Chameleon's getting here a little bit too late, so nice little aggressive attack there from Vincent. Losing all his lizards. A potential opportunity for a counterattack, but with the forward mill and the yeah, those are quick reinforcements concerning the lizards. Do you think that uh, Vincent is already at a bit of a disadvantage because he has lizards versus Squirrel? Because I, I feel like from what we've seen recently, Squirrel just really outshines just pure lizards in a lot of ways, especially when it's supplemented by chameleons. Yeah, the cams are what I'm mostly concerned about here. Uh, the lizards can do pretty decent against the squirrels. It just depends on the engagement. You know, if we get a nice big open area, it's pretty decent. The squirrels wow. are... Oh, but here's the big backstab. Bratmo not in position again. This mill's just going to go down. I wonder what Bratmo's going to do. Yeah, he kind of hesitated. Nice yeah. Yeah. That's huge, though, for Vincent. Just coming in with those 12 lizards and knocking that out. And... Uh, I actually got some advice from the gentleman the other day. It's, you know, you, you kind of want at least 12 lizards if you're going to do stuff like that. Like, if you're going to threaten a base race, like, 12 is the magic number where you can get in and kill a Grismill fast enough. But here comes a counterattack from Bratmo. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough, though. 
Yeah, Good. he lost too many Warrens, uh, and he hasn't rebuilt them, so he didn't have nearly as many Squirrels as he uh, thought he might have had, because they were so many of those were orphaned, and he didn't rebuild the Warrens. So he just sort of went in and lost them, and now he has no reinforcements. So Bratmo's trying to get up to the four Chameleons here. Gets the boar. Bratmo's got to get something done. I don't mind this barbed wire to try to, like dissuade the lizards from attacking or at least Bratmo can maybe keep his units up here over on the right side that way he doesn't have to cover both fronts but the artillery is coming down Vincent's just miles ahead like Bratmo really just needs to end the game with the boar and keep in mind this is the old patch too so this is a 50 second build time boar here you know there's also a potential flanking route towards the left you can, there's actually a one tile space behind Vincent's main that Good backstab, but you know, it's getting towards that five minute mark and at that point, it, I don't think it really matters. Yeah, that would have been cool to see from Bratmo, but I, he would have needed the lizards or like you, you were saying, kind of do it a little earlier on. And here's the leapfrogging Arties from Vincent. This is definitely gonna be an attack range, but the boar is on the way. If Bratmo can buy a little bit of time, maybe he can try to base race his opponent. Uh, but this is looking pretty good grim for Bratmo. Let's see if he can make something happen here. It's tough. Vincent has all the money in the world to do this, and uh, Bratmo's on his back foot. The boar is coming out, though, halfway done, but uh, I'm not sure how effective a boar is against two artilleries. Yeah, the the only saving grace Bratmo has is he does have a better standing army. Like, all of Vincent's money is in these defenses. He's only got 12 lizards. Oh, but is he going to find another pocket? No, Bratmo is in position. Going to be able to, to clean that up. So if Bratmo just kind of tries to walk around the defense... You know, he, he might be able to do something, but Vincent would just surely base race with the lizards in that case. Certainly. All right, let's find out. The boar is here. So, you know, I could see an opportunity if he does... If Vincent somehow loses his lizard army, and he's not able to back up his uh, defense. As you said, they, he can just walk around and sort of keep Vincent at bay. Let's see what he does here. He is Ooh. actually just pushing through the front. Now, keep in mind, the boar does uh, deal extra damage to structures. It, it actually melts down structures very quickly, so... Yeah, he Bratmo actually just took out one of the artillery that was building, so that's 240 down the drain for... for uh, they are still 240, right? Uh, 180 for the arty, but he got a turret too, so I think it was actually yeah. 240. Interesting, Vincent was trying to set up for the flank, but now Bratmo's coming up. If Bratno, Bratmo just keeps taking gristmills while he does this, he might have a chance, but no, he's going to come home. He anticipates the counterattack. The lizard's going right through the middle of that barbed wire. And this is actually not looking bad for Bratmo. Yeah, the sort of all in on the on the dead mill, using his entire army probably wasn't a good move there. Uh, luckily, he does have the money to refill, but now Bratmo has the map advantage and can keep Fence on the back foot here if he wants to. Yeah, Bratmo's just. I think he's just got to. No, he's gonna go up the middle. I'm surprised. Now look how fast the board just. Wow, that's and, fast. Yeah. That's awesome. And yeah, and uh, Fence is sitting at only six lizards in a standing army and Falcon's on the way. A another push and potentially that already can go down and then the next attack could be curtains for Fence, depending. Yeah, these Falcons really got to get something done. The boar does surprisingly oh, well against all these defense. In the water. Oh my God, he got caught out. And the boar does die, but there's a lot of squirrels still left. Is Bratmo going to oh, do this? The yeah, the Chameleons on the front line tanking heavily for the Squirrels, allowing to take out the Falcons' front line. That one Chameleon staying alone for a while. Wow, this is crazy, actually. Yeah, Bratmo clawing his way back into this game. I think you sell the Boar Warren here and maybe just try to get a lot of Squizzard. No, he decides to go down on a cam, but he, there's no way that he's going to get another Boar. I mean, 180 food is a, it's a tall order here. And now they're equal on farms. And Brad has a better army value with that chameleon. But Falcon's coming in now, see what they can do. Yeah, Falcon's un unprotected, but it still drives Bratmo away for the time being. He's got to sell this Boar Warren. Yeah, I think he's going to come do that now. And Squirrel Cam does fine against, you know, Lizard Falcon. I think he'd be oh, okay. Certainly. And selling that Boar was a great money dump there. It's so good to have. It's sort of like uh, an investment in a way. Yeah. Yeah, it was a nice little... Uh, insurgence and uh, resurgence into his economy there. 
<laughs> nice. Try to do something with these lizards. It just doesn't have enough. But you know what? They are buying Vincent some time. So there is that. But man. Four Falcons up. This is looking good for Bratmo. Is the, is the comeback real? Dang, I'm impressed. I, I'm actually really surprised how, how well the boar did against all that defense. And I think from here, Bratmo just takes it. Yeah, Vincent's going to hang out a little bit longer, but that should be game, especially once this uh, Grismal falls. Vincent's got nothing left. Man, that was a great use of the boar. Yeah, that... That was... I was amazed at how quickly those arties went down. That was fantastic. Yeah, I guess you'd have to have, like, maybe balloons or something to help try to keep that boar back. I'm not so sure. But there it is. There's the tap. GG. Bratmo with a uh, with a cool c comeback manages to break through Vincent. Vincent might have been toying with his food a little bit there, though. I think he could have maybe jumped on the opportunity a bit better when he had the lead. Yeah, I think it really came down to when he lost his lizard army when he ran through the barbed wire, and then there was really nothing left to protect the artillery when it came to. Yeah. Uh, it, yeah. Okay, I guess let's keep going. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, if anybody doesn't mind, let me know if the store page levels are okay. I'm not super worried about it tonight, but we do want to broadcast the championships tomorrow or the levels here as well. Let me know. I think everything looks good. So I'll take another look real quick to see what's on the store page. Hmm, I don't see it. Yeah, it's just under the community hub. Yeah. What's up, Pez and Dino and Ziggy, everybody in chat? Good to see y'all. As normal, I appreciate everybody turning out on a random time, but I had all these lovely submissions. I didn't want them to go to waste, so I figured we would take a last look at the previous meta before this patch uh, hits. And, uh, and you know what? I actually want to talk a little bit about the changes for a moment. Because I, I really like them. I've been playing, uh, I'm trying to get back into to playing more with the tournament coming up. You know, that way I can I can do well in the tournament. And, you know, these changes seem really cool. Yeah, the mole warren spawning as soon as uh, the warren is finished and the mole is paid for. I actually think that's a really interesting change. Uh, it's too early to tell. But I would like to do some testing, because I believe if your opponent goes for that old school, like, 4-5 farm mole rush, like, it's going to deal damage if, if you're not ready. You can't pivot and build a squirrel warren in time anymore with that one mole coming out faster, you know what I mean? Yeah, it seems like it's opened up the opportunity for those old mole rushes, as you said. Yeah. Because before, you had to wait another 20 seconds on top of the build time, mm -hmm. right? And now, I mean, that additional 20 seconds is a lifetime in Tooth and Tail. Yeah, the uh, the mole coming out instantly. You can you can basically get two moles out very quickly. Like if I spot that mole warren and in response like sell a farm and, and try to build my own squirrels or something. I think the squirrels are too late, which I actually really like because now we're in. We we might have to do some of the old school openers. Like it used to be, you you couldn't go straight eight farms and be safe. You know, you, like you had to open five farm warren and then you go up from there to be safe. So. We might see a little bit more variance in the early, early game, like pre-8 farm game, which I think is cool. Uh, the Chameleon's recloak time got nerfed uh, to half a second from a quarter second. I, I kind of like that change, and I think it's an, a unique way to approach the Chameleons. Chameleons were really strong in this meta, so instead of like changing how bruisey they, they are or how good they are in direct engagement... You know, we're changing that recloak. So what that means is you either got to pull them out of the fight and re-stealth them a little bit earlier to save them. But the big change that I, I do like from that is it's going to be a little less oppressive with, like, chameleon backstabs where you just come in and, like, get a farm and, you know, re-stealth and get out of there really quickly, you know. Now, now I think there's a little more opportunity for counterplay against that, which is cool. Uh, we see the Falcon got a little bit of a DPS nerf. The boars got got a little bit of an HP nerf. The big change in my book, though, is the tier three and artillery. I guess uh, yeah. builds ten seconds faster now. You got forty five from fifty on the production time and on the warren time, which is great because in the previous meta we di we didn't see a whole lot of tier three because cam play was just so strong and like these big mid game powerful armies. So I think this opens up 
you know, the possibility to throw those really fun tier three units back into the mix and hit some timing, timing attacks and, and that kind of thing. So, yeah, it seems like we're trying to hit that middle ground where every game we're not trying to rush Fox. Yeah. But in the previous meta, it was like, why even go Fox? But now let's see if we can get people to consider it in, in certain circumstances. Exactly. Now, now rushing a Fox or doing a boar, like the boar timing was still a thing. And I think that's what some players are worried about. It's like, well, the boar timing just got stronger, but the boar did lose some HP. I don't, I don't know. It is weird because the Falcon was a big counter to that, but the, the Falcon got nerfed a little bit. So we'll see. The meta's still up in the air and it's actually really exciting with the Tooth and Tail Championship starting this weekend, uh, to see like some of what these big players do, you know, and adapt to this new new meta game. So, anyways, enough rambling from me. Let's uh, let's hop into match number two. Are you ready? Let's do it. All right, three, two, one, go. Okay, spawning in the bottom, we've got Blue Coon, and his opponent up top, Lego Man, ninety six. Rocking that Wolf Warren. Uh, you know, it's funny as we were just talking about not a whole lot of Tier 3 being used on this patch, but this time around, both players uh, with some tier, tier 3 picks here. And no cams either, so this, this almost looks like a new patch game in a way. Hmm. Kind of a nice mid-rangey map. You know, Lego Man can't complain about his spawn. He's got two naturals right there. It's actually fairly balanced, to be honest, because Blue Coon's got two expansions of his own, and then there's kind of this one fourth base that's in the middle, you know? So I actually like this map a lot. And, and he, where Blue Coon's commander is right now, that could be a cool spot for some lizard runbys or something like that, but no lizards in this game. <laughs> yeah, this map is almost built in the editor. I mean, you have, it's almost symmetrical. You've got that middle base and potential, several potential flanking points. Even on the eastern side of the map, if at any point a player takes that uh, eastern base, I be cool to see people sort of slip in behind from the left there, or from the right, I mean. Yeah. You know, the, in the grand finals uh, last week, or was it the week before? I think it was the week before. We, we kind of got lucky. We were really surprised, like, some of the last matches. Like, the maps were very, very balanced. And, you know, to be honest, like, lately, I, I haven't seen a whole lot of maps that are just, like, this guy's got no chance on it, you know? But talking a little bit about this game, we got a quick Tier 2 coming out from Blue Coon. And Lego Man just scouted it, so let's see what his response is. So far, he's just hitting that Tier 1 button. And he's not sure which tier two it is. That's pretty important to find out. Uh, no expansions from either side yet. So this is gearing up to be a pretty scrappy mid game here. It's likely he'll wait to see what comes out of this. Yep. Yeah. Just chilling. This is rough because you are floating a little bit of food, but knowing what you're up against is so important. He sees it's a snake. And let's see what Lego Man's going to do in response to that. Maybe get his own snakes. Yeah. So cool. Let's see where this. Okay, finally we see a second base going down. And did Blue Coon scout that? He did not. And I think Blue Coon's still just kind of powering up for a big attack. He's got his two snakes here. Is he gonna wait for some more units or just start pushing? Looks like he's moving out. There's no lizards here to to really buffer against this snake harassment. So these snakes can do some some real big damage with the right micro. Yeah, his snakes are still half away, and now here comes the attack. Luckily, uh, Lego Man does have some pigeons to heal and the Warrens to stay back on. And now a snake is coming out. This should be able to push back the attack for now. Yeah, losing certain, most certainly both his snakes. Wow, really good defense there by Lego Man. Those pigeons really came in handy. Yeah, especially considering the army graph. Like, Blue Coon had a very powerful attack coming in, kind of showcasing the defender's advantage. He did lose, like, a Warren or two there, but overall, yeah. very nice hold. finally taking his own expansion yeah over in the back no no farms from either side yet this can be a, a tough spot you know you're you're in a little bit of a tier one chicken situation you don't want to be caught being the player who's trying to rush up to some farms while the other guy just keeps hammering down those squirrels and you know comes in and attacks so let's see what these guys are gonna decide to do Look at man's got a pretty big army here. What's the move? Are we gonna see a wolf here soon? Nope, just 
Just some more pigeons for the time being. It's a shame none of these players have structures, because this would be a great opportunity to, I guess, take the middle of the map, but any engagement we're going to see are going to be unit on unit. Yeah, some defenses would have been awesome on this map, because you take that more forward mill, you know, and then your, your territory is essentially at your opponent's front door, and you start throwing down some balloons or something, that'd be awesome. And both players starting to build some farms, so we might be evolving a little bit here into more of a mid game, some big armies from both sides. Both players doing a really good job scouting one another. Blue Coon just got a really good read there on how many farms Lego Man was building. He saw the double tier two. How does he want to respond to that? His own double tier two, but he's going to go up to four snake uh, rather than put in some falcons. I think that's smart, but I, I kind of like Lego Man's comp a little better when he gets the skunks, you know, to help deal with all the, the squirrels on the field. Yeah, it's going to be a tremendous amount of damage over time. Uh, since these armies are so slow and standing, the skunk gas is definitely going to pay for itself, no doubt. Do you think there's a sweet spot for how many pigeons you should get in these types of circumstances? Is there ever too many pigeons that you could get? Yeah, I think so. I, I kind of like around six pigeons myself, but I'm not the biggest pigeon player in the world. And a lot of times when you have the pigeons, you're, you're kind of pairing them with the badgers. I think... There's a chain, like, I think only nine pigeons can heal a unit at once now, or eight, or something like that. Like, they actually have to be nearby on the tile, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Like, it isn't like the old days where they could just stack indefinitely for the, for the most part. So, yeah, something like six or nine pigeons is probably the right number. We see the wolf warren going down here. Let's see if Blue Coon can get in there and sniff that out. Ooh, yep, he is going to see it. And he sees it with some decent time. He's, he's got about another minute and a half or so until that wolf hits the board. So he's going to grab his own owl, or no, he's going to macro up. That's definitely another possibility. Yeah, what's going through his mind right now? Because typically you see a tier 3 warren, and you're thinking, especially in today's meta, uh, must be a badger coming out. Like, At what point do you think, maybe it's a wolf, you know? Yeah. Uh, well, in, nowadays you could actually see what unit it is. Which is, which is nice. So he does know it's the wolf, but there are a couple different ways to respond against that. And one of them that's like a little counterintuitive is actually just macroing up. Like if you see your opponent taking a tier three, you've basically got, you know, a minute to two minutes before you get hit. So one of the ways people respond is just taking a whole bunch of farms and then just hoping that you have so much more than them. Their additional tech doesn't matter, if that makes sense. Gotcha. But, just to clarify, you said you can see the tier 3 that's building? Yeah, yeah, you can actually see. So Blue Coon, when he went in and scouted that tier 3 Warren, he sees the wolf emblem like we do uh, in, in ah, spectator mode. I assume that's only for tier 3. Yeah, that's only for tier okay, 3. Fantastic, that's new to me. Yeah. <laughs> you old school players, you, you didn't get those uh, <laughs> you didn't get those luxuries, man. You had to, you had to guess, or you had to just know the, know the player, you know? <laughs> Back in my day. <laughs> Here we go, the wolf is out. And it's so awesome how versatile it is. You never know if they're gonna use it to, you know, shore up their economy or just get units out faster, or even just supplement it in the army to, you know, make speedy snakes, which can be amazingly uh, frustrating to play against. Some roomy boys. And yeah, this this wolf is essentially making uh, Lego Man double his farms here, you know, buffing all these pigs up. You know, they're, they're producing double the economy that they normally would. And I'm not super versed with wolf play. I do want to mess with it a little more, but apparently, like, wolf buff, buff skunks are better than they sound, you know? Because, yeah, this, the skunk gas won't stack, but you just lay out so much gas so fast, you just cover their entire army. Oh, it certainly matters for sure. Oh, look how fast those snakes are. That mill's dead. Roomy vipers. Jeez. 16 stacks of poison in no time. Goodbye, third base. And Blue Coon did not get the Owl. He had plenty of time for it. Instead, he's opting to just go crazy on Tier 2. Eight Falcons is nothing to bat an eye at. And this is the previous patch. Keep that in mind. So these Falcons are a little bit stronger than they are on live here. And we see Lego Man currently has double the amount of squirrels that Blue has. Uh, this could just come down the numbers at some point. 
These kind of games are always fascinating to me because we're we're in this little bit of a, a standstill situation. As I say that, I'm sure somebody's gonna come out and attack. But what, what's what's cool is like the aftermath of the big attack. Hold that thought as the big engagement is coming in here. Is the wolf in position? It is barking out those units in the back, trying to buff up some some of the flying units. Ideally, getting those falcons in there and. Let's see, a lot of this tier 2 is still alive for Blue Coon. He's got a few Falcons in the air. These Pigeons really helping out healing. But the Wolf is still here, but Lego Man doesn't have a whole lot more than that. The third base is going to go down. Blue Coon doing a nice job pushing in here. Luckily, he did keep his Wolf and all that. Uh, not losing too much off of that, considering Blue Coon only has one farm to fall back on. But I think Lego Man's okay for now, because of the speedy scrolls. Yeah, he's got a really fast uh, re reproduction rate here since he has so many tier 1 warrens. And yeah, these squirrels being buffed up is no joke. Look at this, man. They're coming back. The retreat is absolutely killing Blue Coon oh, and Lego, Legend's man. Gone. Jeez. Stimpak squirrels here. All right, Blue Coon trying to mount a defense at his third base. It is poison, but I think it'll barely live. And maybe Lego Man got a little bit too ahead of himself there. No, he's able to, to come back home. So, interesting spot. However, Blue Coon still has his third base up. But now this is an interesting point because we spent all game building those armies. And now you kind of have to sell Warrens down to, to what you can afford to, to remake, you know? All right, how important is the wolf here? Is it smarter to sell the wolf and just try to remax to, you know, get back into this game? I think if with the wolf still alive, you, you just rock it. That that's the that's the plan. We still got him alive. Let's get as much value as possible. But if you went down, I, I certainly would would sell the Warren. I, I think Lego Man should probably sell the Falcons just to get as many squirrels as possible. But yeah, I mean you're right, like you could just get a, a 360 food injection into the economy if you sold that wolf. Maybe that would have been the right play here as Blue Coon manages to run over the rest of the army taking the match. Really cool game. Okay. Let's keep it rolling. I think I rambled enough in between the last game. So are you ready to just hop right into match number three? Uh, yes, yeah, sorry. Let's do this. Yep. Okay. Three, two, one, go. All right, spawning on the right, we've got QQ. And his opponent to left, the stretch. I love QQ's deck. This is awesome. Look at this. Ferret, wow. Fox, Balloon, Barbed Wire. And then he's got the Boar in case he wants to pivot and, and not go for that, that strategy, I guess. And only Lizards. Which is kind of neat, but lizards are, are so strong at the moment. I, I don't hate it. I think this you... is a sign of a player who has a game plan. Yes. Yes. It's... And considering the map layout, yeah, uh, balloons will definitely be effective here. There's so many uh, like small chokes, not a whole lot of open space, so he can definitely force people into where he wants them to go, depending on how he plays this. Yeah, imagine QQ takes this cabin or something, you know. That's a wonderful spot to start setting up some defense and start pressuring the side of Stretch's map. But Stretch has a fantastic spawn here. I mean, five gristmills in his front yard. However, I think this game might come down to Ooh. trying to control this area where the cabin is here in the center. Stretch is going to... Wow. Huge macro play. We're going to nine farms before even a... Okay. That's what to say. Yeah, we got some some fast expand openings here. And this is kind of cool that both players decided to go for the fast expand because now scouting becomes very, very important. You really want to keep an eye on how many farms your opponent's building and try to stay like one ahead if possible. But so far, QQ hasn't scouted the fast expo from the stretch. And stretch actually being crazy greedy here. Going for a fast expansion and a tier two. I imagine both players understand that the rush distance is far too long. The curves and the water through this map. Ooh, and look at this. QQ responding with his own greed, selling the first, his first war and going for three farms. 
and Stretch selling his tier two at first as well. Going, <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think QQ responded correctly to to the fast tier two. He could just kind of greed up for a little while because it's going to take a bit till that tier two comes out. He's going to attack in here with these three lizards, and he's actually going to get both of these pigs. Oh no, gets a little bit of a sell at the last minute. Nice little runaround attack from QQ. If he just drops a tier three with all this money, I would be so happy. Just do it. Just do it, man. Come on. Yeah! All right. <laughs> this is insane. All right. This. All right. Stretch needs a scout. It Luckily, he is building snakes already, which is kind of what you want against the boar. But this is nuts. This is a crazy game from QQ here. And like you mentioned, you know, this map is huge. And you, you have more wiggle room to do really greedy stuff when the rush distance is so long. QQ just out and about with the lizards. Gonna try to come in and attack again, but is the stretch gonna be in position? He's gonna get at least one pig and back out of here. Nice aggression. That that's such a that can easily get into to your opponent's mind too, you know. Like if you constantly get hit by lizards, just the threat of that, it makes you think twice about moving out. No, you're not wrong. When was the last time Stretch left his base? I think he's been sitting sitting in there for several minutes now. Has no idea what's coming at him. Yeah, that's a good no point. point. On his own tier three. He hasn't actually got a scout in in a long time. He's throwing down the owl, but... I mean, look at this from QQ. This is insane. I think QQ's playing a very good game of Tooth and Tail here. Very greedy, but... It's, it's kind of justified greed, in a way. And I like how he's being really greedy and keeping the pressure on with the lizards. You know, so he's kind of like feigning that he's being aggressive in a, in a way. Yes, like any moment, I'll come in, but you don't know when. Yeah. I'll ever come in. <laughs> oh, look at that. Okay. So the boar's here. Ferret's you know, on looks the way. Like he's setting up for a defensive play, so he... Oh, wow, now going for Fox as well. Yeah, I, I think I would have rather seen the Fox first, unless he was just trying to hit a timing with the boar. That way he could get in there and start harassing it and then kind of use the boar later on to seal the deal but yeah kq's not in any any hurry he just wants to build up and i don't know i'm a little worried because if stretch gets some time to sit around you know he can put together owl falcon with all this money and that's a very strong army comp snake owl Falcon Skunk in the late game is just crazy. Here's the Siege coming in. Stretch has some Falcons. He could try to buffer this a little bit. But I don't think he wants to take an engagement just yet. The Owl is here, which is fantastic for Stretch. Now we can start pushing back a little bit of counter harassment. You can tell QQ really wants this base. He has this sort of... Uh leapfrog motion he wants to do, but now that Owl's out, I don't think he's going to keep his position. Even with those Warren Ferrets. But in the very least, he's got those three balloons on the back end. Yeah, he might want to leapfrog those balloons up, because they are so far away, and QQ trying to take that mill to, to pull forward. I think he might want to take this one more in like the 11 o'clock. Maybe that would be more doable, to, to try yeah. to push up with his defense a bit. But I, I'm kind of going on on Stretch's side of, the, uh, of things here, though, because I think QQ's deck is just not going to scale into the late game as well, unless he just gets a crazy balloon wall up. Ooh, that fox actually hit a uh, falcon. That's exactly what you want. And Stretch needs a little bit more. He can't be overconfident here. I'd love to see him get up to another Owl. You know, get some more farms on that third base. Uh, QQ's economy is doing great. Actually, they're, they're pretty matched at the moment, but I think Stretch's second base should be mining out here soon. Uh, he should probably find the time to head over to that bottom camp and sort of get that supplementary money. Yeah, that would be I good. Right now. And uh, notice he doesn't have any pigeons, so that boar is going to take a while to heal. Maybe set him in some water for a bit. It might help. You know, I'm still 
I'm always so sad how little players utilize the water healing. <laughs> it's like, just throw him in the water! Alright, second owl on the way. I wouldn't even hate a third. I think I think the rest of Stretch's comp is fine. Like maybe maybe some skunks, but against the lizards and the fox, I can I can understand not really needing the skunks as much. They're they're a little better against, you know, squirrels and moles and that sort of thing. But we're building up to a lot of boars and foxes, which is kinda interesting because boar and fox isn't exactly the tier three you think of when you think of stacking tier three, you know. Okay, yeah, I was expecting uh, when the stretch would use his mice to kill these barbed wire, and it goes down so quickly, and he's going to have three at some point, so I don't think this barbed wire will be very good uh, come when those three owls come out. Yeah, the barbed wire is cheaper than it used to be. It's no longer 20 food. It's either 5 or 10. I can't remember off the top of my head. Maybe somebody in chat knows. Uh, but, so that is a thing. But again, man, I think the stretch is just building up a really really good late game army and it's nice that this fox is coming in and, and poking and getting a couple shots here and there but i'm not sure if it's going to be enough you know once three owls hit the board it's going to start dealing some real damage yeah i like the fortress that he set up here he can sort of contest both these bases as he's doing now but as you said his uh, the stretch's army is just going to be just better come later game yeah i think the stretch has kind of got a put his foot down here though he really can't allow QQ to set this base up and gain that additional income right now it's four grist mills versus three which is nice for stretch but if QQ can set this up and start moving his defense up you know now all of a sudden he gets another base he can deny this mining base from the stretch and puts him in a great spot Ooh, is that boar gonna go down it's getting low it's got four stacks of poison no pigeons on the back. No line. pigeons. Down. There yeah, there it is. Slope. No, there's a fear that if the boars take out the standing ground army, the uh, foxes could theoretically take out the owls from above. So he's got to be careful and make sure not to lose too much of his ground army in these sort of pokes that he's going for. Yeah, unable to get to the barbed wire as fast because they all died. Yeah, and these mice, you know, will will eventually break this barbed wire. This is very cost efficient for the stretch as long as he can keep the owls up in all these engagements. You know, these foxes have been doing good. Like they keep hitting falcons, which is real nice for QQ. Do you think the falcons are doing him as good right now? Because there are two foxes on the field, plus there are so many balloons. I feel like every time the stretch pops in, he's losing falcons just like that without them doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, I think you, you kind of need the Falcons, because that's what helps you against the Balloons, but maybe he should just kind of be pulling in with the Owls, you know, instead of the whole thing. Because right here, like you were saying, two Falcons just went down. Three Falcons went down. So that's 180 food right there. An Owl oh, goes down. Owl as well. QQ putting up a fight. Is QQ actually going to buffer through this? The Boar Fox is a kind of interesting combo against Owl. Like, typically the Owl beats Fox in, in direct engagements, you know, but having the boar there to buffer against the mice and the barbed wire is really making a difference. Here we go. QQ sold some on the back lines and now trying to push up his lines, which is smart because he's running out of farms at this point. Uh, the stretch does have the opportunity to build more in the back lines. I hope he still knows he has four spots left. Yeah, on this uh, 7 o'clock base down there, there's definitely some more mining capability, but if QQ gets this base... That is huge, you know, he throws down a balloon or something. These foxes can come in and, and get some bacon like that. Yeah, look at this, just more value. Here come the mice, but with these, with this flamethrower, not a big deal. Yeah, I think QQ's, uh, um Army composition just allows for such good trades Trades every time there's an engagement. The foxes always take something out. The ferrets will no doubt get something that's retreating or coming in. It, and the boar's AoE is just massive. It yeah, just hurts every time Stretch goes in. Yeah, typically it, it's rough for the fox against the owl because, you know, they, they kill the mice. It's like big deal. But the boar toasting all these mice and opening up those, those juicier targets for the fox to hit is slowly getting some value. But... Stretch still's got a lot of money. 
trying to build up to those those Falcons. Whew. We're at such low eco right now. Yeah, this is gonna. This is where some real decision making starts coming in. Oh, QQ without the reaction time there, losing a couple ferrets. That's huge, and the base goes down. That's exactly what Stretch needed to stay in this match. Yeah, and you, you can no longer replicate your army as well. Jesus, Falcons, man. How many Falcons have died this game to Foxes? Too many. Like, you gotta start selling stuff off. And now QQ's starving, and he actually doesn't have anything else. He can take this campfire in the bottom, but that's it. He does know about it. So yeah, he's coming down here right now with his lizards to, to take that out to stay in the game. But that's gonna leave him open to the stretch moving in. He? Yeah, he doesn't have enough money to just take that. And while he's out of position, Stretch has free reign to start knocking out all these balloons. Oh, man. Uh-oh. And QQ's still starving! I think he should be fine. He's got another 20 seconds to get down there. Oh, he's got he's got an extra farm on that base. Oh. I didn't even notice that. That's funny. <laughs> but QQ being out of position to try to deal with that cabin just opened him up for Stretch to get in there and deal so much damage. And Stretch with the counterattack move in. The boar is going to go down. That cannot be rebuilt. And I think QQ is just committing in. He's just going for it. And Owl does fall. These two foxes and the ferrets in the back dealing a lot of siege damage, but they just don't have any units up front to really buffer for him. And the foxes... Oh, 1 HP Ooh. on the fox. Oh, now this is tough. He doesn't have any of um, the boars, you said, to take care of those mice. So now there's probably going to be a ton of fodder just going on these. Oh, and now one of the foxes goes down. That's a shame. Yeah, these... Oh, and now they're going to die to the Ooh. mice. Is that going to be it for QQ? Uh, I, I always get curious when the commander stands still for a moment. Normally that's you opening the menu to, to tap out. QQ seeing that the stretch still has an economy. He's got a lot of money to sell back on if he wants to sell at least two of these tier threes. I yeah, that is true. Bad. That'll be a nice insurgence into the economy. But I think if Stretch catches on to this, he's this is an easy A move into his base. But still, keeping it slow, putting his mice in to take out the supplementary barbed wire. Yeah, QQ just doesn't have that that critical mass to kind of be able to to deny the damage from the mice anymore. You know, it used to be when the mice came in, ah, oh, the boar would two boars would flame throw them all down. But now when these mice come in, they're gonna get, be getting value. One boar is back on the field. It actually does a pretty good job at, at cleaning it up. But still, a lizard died. Some barbed wire went down. And now the boar is too far forward. Oof. Is that it for Q? There's the tap. Really neat wow. game. I think Q had an opportunity. I think his deck was more designed to kind of find a nice timing and and pressure your opponent to death, you know? I, I think the best thing that Stretch did that entire game was keep up the pressure and hit the lines of QQ and not allow him to stay behind his base. Because it seems like QQ went in with a clear game plan. I think most people would sit back and not um, sort of pressure QQ. Right. But Stretch did everything right there. Okay, let's keep going. Match number four, are you ready? Let's jump in. Three, two, one, go. Okay, in the bottom right, we've got Saint Abroad and his opponent. In the top left, we've got Jace. Uh, people asking in chat who's commentating. AV Ultima, the original AV OG. AV Ultima. The original OG of Tooth and Tail. I think some of these guys don't remember the uh, Clash of Comrades days. Oh, man, I can barely remember. <laughs> That was fun, man. Best team maker. He was a really good caster back in the day. Who, who else did you guys have, have cast? And you were mainly more behind the scenes, which is hilarious because I, I think you're a fantastic <laughs> caster. But you were you were mainly doing observing and, and all the video production and making all the, the VODs look really sweet and stuff, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, if you guys go back and check out the Clash of Comrades stuff on YouTube, like... It is, it is the most polished, well-produced Tooth & Tail content made. 
Some of those VODs actually got like a, a lot of views and stuff too. They did. Appreciate you bringing it up. It uh, was a good time. Yeah, man. So what we got this game? We got some Badger and Owl. And a pretty large map. These grist mills in the middle are kind of neat. I wonder if we'll see either player actually take those. Uh, but other than that, both players... I actually kind of like this decision here on this map because you have this... Both players kind of have this safe pocket base, right? You can either do that or you can try to claim this territory up top. And whoever gets this mill in the middle is just going to deny the mill from their opponent. You know what I mean? I, th I think if you get this mill in the middle, you just have so much momentum in the game. You're, you're absolutely right. I think we've seen time and time again that uh, the aggressive mills, once you get them, are very hard to take back without great cost. Yeah, it's a huge risk because you're really putting yourself out there like, all right, you know, if, if, you, if you knock this out, you probably win the game, but see some skunks on the way from Saint. Does Jason know about him? He does. He doesn't know it's skunks per se, but he does know it's a tier two, and there's this mill. I don't hate this as long as he doesn't try to put too many farms on it. Oh my god. Oh my god, is this gonna work? Is that... yeah, not quite. Ooh. If he had six lizards, I think it would have been good. Only three, not quite enough there. Oh, this is tough. Now he's got a skunk and squirrels on the high ground next to his mill. Oh man, this is gonna be scary. He's gonna have to spot that. Oh, he almost gets that skunk immediately, but this is some really good gas coverage here. Saint Great Abroad combat. moving forward. Ooh, this is so good. And on the high ground right here, denying vision if Jace can't stay up there. That was such a good move out from Saint. He's even got the pigeons here to help heal these skunks up. Ooh, this, this looks real rough for Jace here. He's trying to break this again, but he just doesn't have enough army. This might be a short match. Yeah, I think this is an opportunity to go on to this next piece of high ground and just siege from the, the top here. But maybe just deciding to... You know, he'll take his advantage and move forward. Yeah, he's he's taking it taking it slow right now. But I think Saint probably had the opportunity there, especially with the pigeons like healing up on the front, to to maybe just end it. But Jace, I like this from Jace a lot. He's just massing up lizards. The lizards gonna do better against the comp that Saint had. Oh, Jace is just getting ready for the base race. That's what it is. Taking all these mills, building up a bunch of lizards. And if Saint catches a uh, whiff of this, he's got Toads, so that could be tough for Jace if he starts building more Toads, if he just even adds them, for that matter. And there, yeah, there's his first Toad Warren. Yeah, the, the 200 IQ play is to keep the Toads at home. It's a little bit hard to control that because you can't use the Move All Army button. But you kind of build like six or nine toads, keep them at home near your main base. That way when the lizards try to run in, they just run into the toads, you know? Yeah, Jace definitely wants the base race here. And Saint's not in position, but Jace is going to try to attack right in. I don't think this is going to work. He is... Oh my god, is that mill going to live? It does. Ouch. Ooh, that's rough for Jace. And Saint's probably has a good opportunity to just... A move in and, and seal the deal here, but there's a lot of grist mills he's actually got to take down. And Chase has so many warrens, he's rebuilding these lizards very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> what a pull through. Yeah, he doesn't quite have enough. He needs that, that 12. Tw I think 12 is kind of the magic number. He only had like six or seven there. And this is kind of going from bad to worse here for Jace. So unfortunately, he doesn't have something like moles for one last YOLO, you know? Okay, he's uh, attempting a base relocation. I wonder if Saint will scout this. All right, content to just leave that yellow mill there to the right of him. <laughs> yeah, Saint's in a really good oh. spot, but I think he's just being a little too cautious at this point. I think he needs to get in here and, and deal some damage. He's so far ahead this game. I am so disappointed that there is not a way for Jace to get through on the south end. Oh, I man. I think there is, but there is not. Oh, actually, there is. You see this little ramp next to the base? He could take that, like, all the way around. Oh, no, you're right. He can't. Yeah, this is all blocked off here in the south. Dang. 
Oh, that I would have got so triggered. That's how I would have lost this game, maybe. I would have taken my lizards up there. <laughs> but like, surely there's a way to get back, and no. Oh gosh, yeah, Saints in such a good spot here, but still just taking it slow. Just gonna hang out, and they, I think he's just gonna wait for this badger to seal the deal. If Jace came back, it would be a miracle. I, I I've seen stranger things happen. But Jace really can't directly engage, and he doesn't have a whole lot of wiggle room to try to run around this army. Oh, he's backed in a corner! He's trying to juke him out. Oh, did he? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Amazing. Oh, is he, he gonna get, get this Warren? Oh my this god, mill. is he gonna get this mill? <laughs> yeah, Jace! I never doubted you for a second. All right. Oh, that's fantastic. Now he's gonna get the main, but then I think he's gonna get trapped, and Saint's still got that one base over in like the three o'clock. Oh my god, can you believe it? We didn't have that mill to the to the two o'clock. All right, all right, how are you getting out of here? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> this is insane. He's got nine lizards. That's not a fully saturated base. A lot of these guys are hurt. Yeah, he wants to do it, but I don't think he can. He's gonna have to come home. He's gonna have to try to give him the the, the wrap around again. Oh my and god! Jace knows if he heads back into his base, he's gonna be. Oh no, Saint! Oh, I think there's an opportunity to go across the water here. Oh, they're definitely. Oh, gonna... here he goes! Oh it, no! And Saint Jace didn't build win. another mill. The badger's here, but it's oh, not gonna be enough. There. Is it gonna be enough? Oh, the... <laughs> damn, Jace! Oh, uh, that was awesome. What just <laughs> happened to this? Look, <laughs> look at that army value, man. Look at that graph. Ah, that's so funny. Oh, no. See, I think that's, uh, that's a lesson in, in playing with your food a little much, you know? I, I think Saint had a lot of opportunities that game to, to go in and seal the deal, but he, he wanted to, to, dr to drag it out to get up to the badger, and yeah, lizards are just such a good comeback mechanic. Jeez, that was awesome. Really well played there by Jace. All right. If you guys are just joining us, I'm sure everybody who's watching this is probably aware, but if you're not, the Tooth and Tail Championships 2020 is starting this weekend. We've got tomorrow nights here on Tooth and Tail TV and on the Steam uh, store page, we are casting uh, the beginning of the Premier League. So... I, I tallied everyone. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, I think there's over 50 people involved in this, which is amazing. That makes me really happy. This is one of the biggest events we've had in a while, uh, turnout wise, which is great. We've got beginner, intermediate, and Premier League. It is too late to sign up, but I'm really happy that we had enough players to fill out each one of those brackets. And essentially, it's a round robin style, so you, you're going to play against everybody else in your division once in a best of five, and then whoever gets the most points out of that is going to enter like a proper tournament after that to see who gets crowned that division winner. Tomorrow night, we're kick, kicking things off with the Premier League, and that is going to be we've got a couple replays. I think it's Lego Man versus Blue Coon. And then we're going into Dizon vs. Mishi live and Dino vs. Weasel live. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun. No, I'm sorry. It's Lego vs. Eel are the replays that we're going to start. So I think we're starting tomorrow night off with Lego Man vs. Eel. And then we're hopping into the other two live matches. Not sure the order on those. It just depends on when the players are available. So I'm really excited about it. Also, Tooth and Tail is on sale right now. It is only $5. So... If uh, now's the time to, to twist the arm of, of one of your friends or, or buddies who maybe been thinking about the game, been on the fence about it. I mean, five bucks, man. You can't beat that. That's a steal. So without further ado, you, you're going to be here tomorrow, right? I think I got AV with me. Uh, you cut out, what'd you say? I said you're going to be casting tomorrow night, right? Yes, I will. Sweet. Awesome. Well, oh, oh, interesting. I thought I only had 11 matches tonight, but I actually, actually double-numbered fives here. So we do have a solid 12. Uh, so oh, yeah, look at that. Cool, cool. All right, let's keep it going. Uh, match number five, are you ready? Let's do it. Three, two, one, go. 
All right, spawning in the bottom, we've got Solomon. His opponent up top, we've got Mochaccino. Mochaccino is the tournament organizer uh, behind Tooth and Tail Championships 2020, uh, which is great. I love to see people step up in the TO slot. This is a very inclusive scene, you know. If, if you if you want to cast or you know cast some events or you know, do something like this, like go for it, you know, and, and make make events. That that's one of the best things you can do for the scene, in my opinion, is is host events and stuff. We've got Jet doing his his VSL Qualnes uh, monthly tournaments now, which is awesome. And we've of course got the Tooth and Tail Championship, which is great, giving the gentleman a little bit of a break, a very well deserved break. Gentleman's always the the mastermind behind the the events, so really cool. I think he's still involved a little bit. Uh, you know, t Tooth and Tail is one of those things. You're you're always you're always involved at least a little bit. I, I still drag you out of <laughs> back into this, you know. <laughs> so, pro what is this? A proxy mine? Where did that mine go down? Yeah, over here. Interesting spot. I guess just to guarantee he sees the timing on that expansion. We got a big map here, so we might see some macro going on. Uh, but kind of awkward grist mills, in my opinion. Both players have fine access to a uh, second base, but third base is going to be difficult. Does that mine trigger if a pig gets too close? So yes, but the in the recent patches, mines it's really hard to trigger mines nowadays. Like if it was the old school mines and the pig walked close to that, it would trigger. But I don't think mm -hmm. it would anymore because you have to be standing like right on top of that mine for it to actually go off nowadays. So got it. Eight farm tier two here for Mochaccino, and it's gonna go unpunished, especially with Solomon investing in some mines on the board. And Solomon actually hasn't even seen it yet. So this is a scary base take if he keeps it, because then he has the essentially the entire map to himself. Yeah, Mochaccino is gonna get this, these cams out, and this was the cam patch. Keep in mind if you are just tuning us, tuning in, this is the old patch replays. I wanted to get to uh, some of you, you lovely players that submit me replays. I try to cast as many as I can, so I figured we'd do a bonus show tonight. Look at the last patch replays I still had stocked up. And so yeah, so these are the scary uh, patch 1.06 chameleons here. Gonna go ahead and trigger that mine, heal back up with the pigeons. And this looks pretty good for Mochaccino. Let's see how Solomon can hold here. Only a few squirrels to defend this. Yeah, no chameleons out just yet. One's about to come out, but all the squirrels are already dead, so I think... Oof. Oh, no. Gonna lose oh. a chameleon. Oh, actually, that kind of helps Solomon stay in this a little bit. Mochaccino trying to just... It, I think he uh, might have been just GG if he got that warrant, you know, but lost a chameleon for it, and also his two chameleons weren't in the fight really helping just obliterate Solomon's army. But he still got some good damage, and I think that was probably still a decent trade for Mochaccino, and he even got the Grist Mill there. That was in the very least what he needed to do. He definitely can't let Suleiman have this position. Though, you know, um, unlike the last game, there is a little bit of a one-tile space on the very close to the western side here if Mochaccino did get caught. All right, Solomon looking to sneak in. Ooh, this would be risky. He might get himself in a concave versus convex situation. And that mine is going to be huge. It deals so much damage. And Solomon's got a nice coverage here. I think he holds this. He shuffled his squirrels maybe a little bit too much, but yeah, he's still going to hold. Nicely done. A little bit ambitious there for Mochaccino, but he's still in this. Maybe sell off a Warren or two. No, going to keep it all going. I guess he's still got a farm economy, so... Slowly but surely, all those squirrels will trickle back out. Man, mines have been really good lately. Like, I lost a couple of games today because of mines. I, I might have to start utilizing them in my play a bit more. Yeah, with mines now not exploding until you, I guess, stand right on top of them, that allows more army to, to get there. Uh, yeah. Before it seemed like they exploded a little too early, so a bit lackluster. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, a double-edged sword to change. You know, sometimes the army will walk by without setting it off, but 
it's a little bit harder to bait those hits out and and deal less. You know what I mean? Like just kind of mind sweep. Yeah, you're right. Like bringing those skunks or chameleons through just to set them off. Now you mm -hmm. have to be a little bit more exact. Yeah. And stuff like this, I mean, that's rough. If Mokuchino moves in to take the engagement and triggers a couple of those mines, like... What a funny position. Mokuchino that's a lot of that. damage. <laughs> it's interesting, too, is Mokuchino still hasn't taken his pocket base here. We are well past that five-minute mark, so... is actually going to save the natural for later, but hold that thought. we got a big engagement coming in. Solomon moving forward, all the chameleons trading out, but Mokuchino's going to hold. These pigeons dealing a good job in, in those handy dandy mines uh, were not useful in that engagement there. 300 fruit from Mokuchino, is he gonna go cam? Let's see it, oh, okay. Interesting, he's kinda like setting shop up over here a little bit. Yeah, this is pretty smart. Uh, if he would've gone for his pocket base, he'd probably get content there and then eventually lose the game because he'd be trapped. But now he's yeah. just sort of in position to move into the mid game and then hopefully the late get that bore out as you said yeah that's that's a really good point i agree because i i think especially after these last couple engagements solomon would have been able to just kind of hold this whole high ground area so now mochaccino he's a little bit stretched thin but i think the game plan is, is to try to maintain kind of where his squirrels and pigeons are standing right now you know and there is actually this nice little reinforcement shoot here against the the edge of the map Oh, yeah, you're right. It does link both bases very nicely. And Solomon also saved his pocket base. He's going to go ahead and take that now as a third. I, I really like Solomon's position this game. I'm curious how Mokuchino is going to crawl his way back into it. I guess it's still fairly even. I, you know, I think Solomon's a bit ahead, but Mokuchino's not down and out just yet. Yeah, definitely give the edge to Solomon here, but it's not such an edge where, you know, like, Mokuchino's still in this, you know what I mean? Oh, certainly. Man, these mines are just so good on this map. Like, look at that. I wouldn't even hate to see a few more mines. Like, Mokuchino has to go through one of these two spots. Yeah, depending on what happens, it, you're right, he's... He's going to need to take a, I guess, a fourth at some point. Oh, he is moving in to sort of mine speed. Yeah, chameleons triggering the mines are uh, very good for the chameleon player. And here we go. A big mine does go off. We've got an enormous fight here. And it looks like Bocaccino is going to come out on top. I think he had a little bit of the better positioning there. And the pigeons are actually making a very big difference. Just helping to keep these units up and running. But the reinforcements from Mokuchino are going to be awkward. Stuff like this squirrel are going to get picked off on the re-rally re here. So he's got to be careful about that. He wants to kind of re-rally his army up top as much as he can. He's probably going home to sell these Warrens off. The third base is here for Solomon. If he can get a good engagement. That was a really good engagement to be honest, from Mokuchino, all things considered. He is a little bit behind the army supply. I guess that graph is a bit misleading because we do have mines out on the board, which is an extra 100 food. It's so maybe a little closer than it looks. <clears throat> no, I say this all the time, but I feel like I'd like to see some ferrets from Solomon here to, in the very least, uh, pressure Mokuchino into <clears throat> taking fights that he doesn't want to, and that's what typically ferrets do. Yeah. But then what happens is that just ferrets don't uh, output enough in the straight up engagements and ferrets just get run over. It's just yeah. Sad to see. Yeah, ferrets have a lot of variance in the the straight up fights, you know. Sometimes they can deal some okay damage if, if the opponent's not moving their army too much and a lot of the units are kind of standing still. And in other times the ferrets can do very, very little. But what's kinda cool about having a defense, even mines, is you can try to bait your opponent, you know, like attack with the ferrets and then have some mines there to, to back them up try to drag your opponent's army into it. But yeah, I, I would have liked to see Ferrets as maybe the third tier two pick, but really going all in on these cams. And Boar on the way here. That Boar is going to be huge. Oh, look at this mine! Over on the right, Solomon knows what's going on. Going to try to come in for a big engagement here. 
Wow, the pigeons have made a big difference this game. Solomon did a lot better this time around with his own pigeons here. And looks like we're gonna have another army trade to get that chameleon. Cool. Yeah, that was nice for Solomon, but the clock's ticking. Actually, the clock is up. Out. The boar is here, and the boar is just gonna roast through the army of Solomon. He doesn't have any falcons, doesn't have any snakes or anything like that to help contest against this boar. And I doubt the Chameleon has enough DPS, even though he gets in there to hit the board. Nowhere near enough DPS to out-DPS those pigeons. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, especially having all these pigeons to back up the board. We don't see that as much as we used to, but I think the pigeons have made a very big difference this game. Oh, yeah. How long the Chameleon's lived. That's still alive. It's fantastic. Yeah, and this, going down. this army from Solomon is just not what you need to defend against this. Really good game sense from Mochaccino there. It's very hard. It's harder than that look to, to really find the right pocket to throw down that tier three. And you saw it was close. You know, when Solomon attacked then, Mochaccino having that 360 food wrapped up really, really hurt him in that, but was able to hold off just enough for that board to, to seal the deal in the end. You know, it almost mirrors that QQ game where you get that great position where you're in that defensive spot to, okay, I'm ready to push out and make a move of my own, but unfortunately I don't have the army to do that. And then eventually the guy who does pushes back against your structures. Yeah. It's, um, I, I like the starting strats, but I'd like to see someone follow through. Okay. Are you ready for match number five again? <laughs> uh, again, again. Let's do it. Okay. Let's keep things moving. Thanks again, everybody, for tuning in. It's always a pleasure hanging out with you nerds. Let's hop into it. Three, two, one, go. All right, spawning on the right, we've got Big Pimpintosh. His opponent, who left this guy? We see Wolf out of both players here. Now, I'm actually really looking forward to this game uh, from this guy's perspective because I think the Ferret Mine play is something that's kind of cool, you know? Because it you, you want to make, like, I ideally you want to make ferrets work with some kind of defense, but the mines are so flexible, you can build them anywhere. They Box can really help. Mark? Ooh, what is this guy up to? You would expect him to have turrets or something if he's gonna go for that. Huh. It's five farms still. For a, yeah, I guess he was waiting for a scout timing to see what would happen. Oh, I think he was trying to see no, he didn't even really see this guy's base. Huh. Yeah, I wonder what that was about. Maybe he uh, was changing his Spotify playlist or something. <laughs> I mean, we the players have got their build timings down so perfect these days that I wonder if that he's, you know, delay just to throw Tosh off or, you know, just a, a little things to sort of scare your opponent, you know? All right, we got the single Mishi lizard coming in. This is an old school thing that, that that Mishi would, would make popular, but gonna come home for now. That was actually a really good scout from Tosh. Like being able to identify a single farm was missing, and then found that warren, and then he comes home, builds his own warren in time. It, Tosh should be perfectly fine against this. He he defended it exactly perfectly. This is kind of the reason we don't see pre eight farm stuff, because uh, at expert level players, you know how to hold it, you know what to do against it, and this guy actually going to transition out, come home, build some farms. Uh, this is why I'm kind of excited for the, the new mole change. Because I, I think that's going to you know, really open up some, some more pre-8 farm aggression type stuff. Like, Tosh did a great job scouting there, but that's, that's the name of the game, really. That's kind of what separates Tooth and Tail. Well, I guess scouting is important in every RTS, but scouting is really important in Tooth and Tail, you know. If I'm playing Certainly. StarCraft or something, you know, I can do certain builds, right? Like, Brood War, okay, I want to get up some Mutas or some Scourges against Corsairs, you know. Y yeah, scouting is important, but it, not as much. Like, there's so much mind games here. You can sell off Warrens. You can be super greedy. And this is interesting from this guy. He's going for Ferrets first, which generally is a little bit weak as, as your first Tier 2 unit. But that's his only tier 2 unit, and Tosh's lizards, which makes poking in with ferrets very hard. This guy out on the map though, and Tosh is gonna get something done here. Knocks out a pig, goes home. Very nice. 
Apologies, I'm a bit distracted by the amount of scout vision this single mine gets on the high ground. That's fascinating. Oh, let me see. Yeah, that is awesome. Now keep in mind, <laughs> this guy is stuck to his commander, so he can't like look around too much. But even if you look at his vision, like he can see troop see movements. Dots, though, yeah. yeah, you see the tro troop movements, which is huge. And look at, this is the mine I was talking about. I don't think it's in the exact right position here to really help this guy as much as he wants. Oh, that lizard is going to trigger it, so yeah. But this is rough, you know, ferrets are not as good as cams in straight up engagements like this. Ooh! As I say that, the ferret lands the shot on the chameleon, knocking it out. This is going great for this guy. Yeah, and here's the thing, once you do have those rare occasions where you get that advantage and have a ferret, there are moments like this where you can potentially take out warrants from afar and just keep that pressure up. Yeah. But this guy's gotta be careful as the retreat for ferrets isn't great. Yeah, keep in mind those snakes, once that poison hits, it's gonna slow the units down. Smart by this guy to leave when he did. I like to see maybe a couple more mines out here to protect these ferrets. We're gonna just go in. A bit of unfortunate timing. Tosh just sold a warrant of something to get something else up, so he's down on a little bit of units and he would have. This lizard oh, ferret good. style is really cool. Like, you know, ferrets are kind of weak against opponent lizards, right? So you get your own lizards uh, to buffer against that a little bit. And this is really on Tosh to micro here. If, if these ferrets land a, a, a hit on the tier two, that could be devastating. One of those snakes went down. I wonder if that was to a ferret shot. Man, this is actually really cool. Like, just yeah, ferret lizard. I, I don't think I've really seen this before, but it's working yeah, well. Like, lizards are so fast, they, they can get up to the ferret siege position and reinforce very easily, but this guy eventually does overstay his welcome, and Tosh cleans those ferrets up, so. Let's see how the game transitions from here. Both players kind of, kind of even. Just gonna go straight on these lizards. Like, Tosh has the tech advantage, but the army values are pretty neck and neck at the moment. Oh, this snake getting caught out, though, is huge. And the chameleon's gonna go down. That was a big victory for this guy. He's gonna continue to smash forward, pick up another tier two unit. Oh, now almost both players are swapping out of their tier two. This guy now going full lizard. Yeah, I think it makes sense to, to get out of the snakes here if you're Tosh. That's just not what you need against lizards. Snakes are great against, uh, they're kind of like an anti-tech unit. You know, knock out those big juicy boys, but the lizards, really, I guess chameleons are like the only tier two that's pretty good against lizard, right? Like, lizard does pretty well against the rest of them. Yeah, I haven't seen a one base game like this in a while. He's going to be the first to break, and there's Tosh going for that base in the north. Yeah, six and a half minutes in and, and no expansions. It's pretty rare these days. The Chameleon's doing their job there. Holding down the fort for Tosh. That was a good victory. Really needed that to get back in this. And Tosh is actually even perhaps at an advantage at this point. He's going to come put the pressure on. This guy is starving. He's going to have to fight near his Warrens. Yeah, Tosh doesn't want to take that fight if he doesn't have to. The extra damage those warrants would soak uh, might make or break the engagement. Man, this guy isn't even fully aware that a base is up there. Not even scouted at all. But now, this guy 20 seconds ahead of Pimp in terms of starving, and now it's just him. Oh, this is just an even battle of lizards. Ooh, that is it. Up. Well played here from Tosh. Real uh, action-packed back-and-forth match there. All right. I really, I really came down to the wire. Yeah. Let's keep it moving and grooving. Match number six. Are you ready? Yeah, let's do it. Three, two, one, go. All right. We got the uh, required premium bow submission here over in the top. <laughs> 
We've got Prebiambo and Saint Abroad, and in the bottom, we've got Dark Ingu and James. Yeah, this is show 94 and Premium Bow submission number 89, I think, so he's only missed five. That's pretty impressive. Is it a tax you must pay? Otherwise, you can't stream. That's, that's the rules. <laughs> I mean, it's the only reason why uh, people put up with me is so we can we can see these beautiful two v twos from Peeboop here. And speaking of beautiful, we got Fox Badger deck, uh, which is pretty awesome. Let's see, we got a five far more in here from James. Uh, pretty pretty standard in in two v two. Two v two does see a lot more pre eight farm kind of openings than than one v one does. But again, I think the mole change might shake that up a little bit. <laughs> and premium's got to leave right when we get to his match, of course. See you later, buddy. All right. Lots of lizards. Let's see if blue and yellow want to do anything here. We, oh, we got James. James is no joke. Who is Dark Ingu? Is that is that somebody's... Actual handle, or is that a smurf? I think that maybe they go by something else. I'm not 100%. But so far, nothing super crazy just yet. Looks like red and green are moving out. This is kind of an interesting map gen. Like, blue and yellow, yeah, they're, they're closer to one another, but they've kind of got their naturals, and that's it. Like, red and green are spread out, but they're in the position to get third bases as well. Ooh, nice pick off on that Warren there, too. Yeah, a bit of unfortunate placement. Oh, is that going to be another Warren, too? Where are Yellow's units? Yeah, they're coming in from really far away. Yeah, Dark Ingu's got these squirrels, and even with the road here helping make them run a little bit faster, they still take a while to help get over. So that was kind of a 2v1 and a 2v1 here. And they will eventually hold, but some serious damage got done. But two pigs, two Warrens. More cost-effective trades. James have has no warrants at the moment. See what his first warrant's gonna be right now. Okay, turrets. Safety. Yeah, I think he's just trying to hold on for a minute, get his economy back up. A little bit of a risk, but I like it. You gotta do something. And keep in mind there's this other entrance over here where Dark Ingu is taking his second base. Was it Ingu Masses Bowl in the RPG? It was. Ooh. Is that who it is? Is it is it Masses Stealth? Oh, Dark Andy. That's what Ingu is. Oh, Ingu's Andy? Andy? Yeah. Well, no, that that's what Ingu means. In right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. It could be Master Stealth, or it could be a, uh, a fan of the RPG. Let's see. Saint Abroad moving in with the Lizards. Oh, Man, I missed a session. They did another session on Sunday. I wasn't able to make it. But hopefully we'll do another one of those sessions here soon. It's Premium Bow's uh, like D and D tabletop kind of game. It's based. Oh, you in... guys are doing that in Tooth and Tail RPG, I imagine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's like Tooth and Tail theme. It's actually been really fun. I've streamed it a couple times. They did a session with me last weekend. I wasn't without me, rather. I wasn't able to make it, but hopefully next time I can be there and we can stream it. I think I think the audience enjoyed enjoyed watching it. A little something different. I'm glad it's doing well. Awesome. All right, double snakes here. So many here. lizards from Saint. All right, we see Fox on the way as well. James is kind of hunkered down. Some some barbed wire here, some turrets, just trying to get that fox out. But Premium Bow is not giving him any breathing room. Meanwhile, over here up top, these lizards should just wreck through this engagement pretty close. But the lizards do eventually take it. And we're kind of split here. It's like red versus blue in the bottom and then green versus yellow in the top. And, you know, Squirrel Snake is kind of getting manhandled here by, by straight up lizard uh, comp. So, this is starting to look good for Saint Abroad. Yeah, it looks like he's going to take this out again, but choosing to. Well, yeah, after taking the farm is all he needs. Yeah, the. Man, the southern team is sort of just getting squashed and squashed back in here. And they're about to lose several farms each. But, All right. hey, uh, James has his fox out, so maybe could, they can push out using this somehow. Yeah, but being on the low ground here, nice mine sweeping there. And he's got to worry about the snakes, and there's so many mines. Oh, so careful. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Premium Bow's like, fine, you have a fox, but you're never going to get vision. 
Jeez, that is so many mines. All right. Actually, it's open on the right now. No green units on the map, but uh, not really recognizing. Ah, uh, has to come back and defend. Yeah, maybe I just missed an engagement there. Dark Ingu uh, transitioning over to Pure Lizard. I think that's the right call. That Squirrel Snake comp wasn't exactly working right. Uh-oh. Oh, Premium Bow's uh, snakes went down, and a lot of these mines got picked up by lizards. James doing a really good job with his Fox Micro here. Ooh, oh my god, oh. 1 HP! <laughs> uh, you better run away! <laughs> That's spooky. Jeez Louise. Uh, engagement's long past now, but those two turrets actually putting in a ton of work when uh, Premium Bow came in to fight. Okay, oh, man, all right. Mind. James is uh, trying to inch his way back into this. Meanwhile, Saint and Ingu still in a bit of a slap fight up north. Just continually trading Lizard Lizard. Yeah, it looks like maybe Saint Abroad's starting to make some, some progress here. Getting that pig is huge. You know, we, we're well past the five minute mark, and no one's really got a second base super up and running. Like, I guess Saint's kind of in the best spot as far as that goes. James is finally pushed out of this uh, stranglehold that, that Peeboop had on him and is now able to queue up some farms, but still being very hesitant with this fox. You know, with snakes out on the map, with all these mines here as well, uh, that fox could do, go down very, very quickly, and that's really James' lifeline in this match, although he is building up a big lizard force. This is split up so nicely. I feel like there is an opportunity of... Uh, Two of the players just ganged up on one another. Uh, they've been able to knock him out, but uh, you leave one front open and the other player will just take it out. So it's just split perfectly right now. Where? Ooh, oh no! Coming in after the fight, but the super box going down, unfortunately. Super, super good play there from Premium Bow. And James being a little bit over eager, he kind of moved out and without any vision on this high ground. And four snakes were just waiting there to hit the fox. Fox getting deleted immediately. Yeah, here's the thing, though. Saint came in to help out Premium Bow, and uh, Ingu came in and took out the farms. But yeah. But was it worth it? Yeah, the big counterattack here from Saint is putting Dark Ingu in a very bad spot. This actually might just be GG for Yellow here. As these lizards rampage the rest of his base. And Saint's not even going to bother finishing off Ingu. He's just going to make sure to deal crippling damage to James. Ingu taps out. I think James is going to be right behind him. And uh, really action-packed uh, game where we got to see some really cool snake mind play uh, here from Premium Bow. That is definitely a graph. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I should have stayed on that a little longer. Once again, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we are looking at the old patch replays. I figured I'd try to showcase some of these matches from people that were nice enough to participate in the show and send me replays before they got too old. Uh, I need some new content, though, guys, since the new patch hit. The new patch is super fun. If you haven't played in a while, now's a great time to get back into it. The meta has been shaken up a bit, and I need those new replays, man, so send them my way, toothandtailtv at gmail.com. And tomorrow night... We are kicking off the Tooth & Tail Championship 2020 events uh, with some pre Premier League matches, some best of fives from some of the best players in the business, and we will be casting those here, uh, I believe 6 to 8, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m.-ish is, is the ideal time frame for that, so just wanted to, to mention all that, and let's keep it moving. I think we're on match 7 now? Yeah, yep. match number seven, let's go. Three, two, one, start. Okay, on the bottom we've got Jace Dream Master and his opponent to the top, the stretch. All right. Jace, the tier three structure master, apparently. Yeah, Jace, the, the meme master. <laughs> let's see it. I love it, Lizard, Owl, Wolf. This is a little bit reminiscent of the pile style. Not quite because Pile would basically take the lizards and all the defense and just do crazy games. Uh, but we, we got something kind of similar. Like, Jace's only real core unit here is the lizard. He's got a little bit of defense to help buffer that. And then he's kind of got his, his cavalcade of tier 3 options. You know, I don't know if the plan is 
to get all three of them and try to synergize them. To me, it feels like maybe you you you, you want to get that fox a little bit earlier on, and then if possible, get the wolf with the fox because that's always really fun. And if the game goes too late, he's got those owls to, to try to transition later. Uh, but on the other hand, Stretch's deck is just super solid. You know, uh, you can put together this Skunk, Falcon, Owl late game comp, which I think is one of the strongest just like super, super late game compositions you can make. He's got those cams in there, very meta on this patch. Uh, so, so really cool. Though, you know... Considering what we saw earlier from Jace, uh, the other five units in his deck may not even be relevant. You know, <laughs> a ton of lizards and run around the map. Yeah, let's see how good this map is for that. You know, it's not terrible. It will take a little while to run through this water, I suppose, but it's definitely an option. And again, on the left side, yeah, you know what? Stretch is kind of open. So Jace could bob and weave around with these lizards. It makes some magic happen. Lots of early mines going down. That is a big investment, but at the same time, he's pretty safe against uh, early attack from Stretch here. But both players opt in for uh, an early expansion. Not the, the crazy earliest you can possibly go, but pretty safe, you know? Jay securing that side of the map quite nicely. He keeps his position. He's got camp and two other mills to fall back onto when he needs to. Yeah, Jace gets a nice scout there, sees exactly what's up. He knows the tier two is on the way. And meanwhile, the stretch comes in and gets some good scouting of his own. And Jace is going to try to take advantage of this little position where stretch has some money wrapped up in that tier two. Does manage to pick up a pig. Always nice. And decides to come home. Kind of interesting stretch. Just just needs that both players here are mainly looking at the second bases of their opponent, and you can kind of infer off of that, you know, how many farms you see there. It is important to spot things like a, a quick tier three or a double tier two or something like that, though. You might have mentioned this earlier, but you said that. Lizard is quite uh -oh. good versus the squirrel uh, chameleon setup, especially against the chameleons. No, so the lizards are good against squirrels, but the chameleons are good against lizards. So oh, okay. squirrel cam versus lizard uh, kind of come down to the engagement, the numbers. I, I, it's rough, you know. I, I think squirrel cam is solid against lizard, but in the in the current state of the game. Straight up lizard most of the time beats straight up squirrel. It just depends. But double tier three coming down here with so it many mines. It, <laughs> uh, it was scouted by the stretch, and maybe he's worried about these cams trying to come in and sneak and get it. But a little bit funny, you know. That's a huge investment there. Ouch! To defend against all that. And this force is looking deadly. Stretch might have. He's got so much money wrapped up in those tier three, and Ouch. then. Oof. He ran into all of the mines. Uh, yes, these squirrels uh, the stretch are... could not close it out. Uh, I mean, he, he uh, does manage to take out those pigs, which is really nice. That one pig got like three squirrel kills, which is kind of funny. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I think there were six uh, squirrels there with one HP. Yeah, that was insane. You know, Jace did hold, but Stretch dealt a lot of damage there. However, Jace is probably just hoping that this Wolf Fox style will uh, win the game for him. But the Owl's on the way. Chameleons are here, which can do pretty decent against the Fox. So I'm kind of liking this first stretch. You know what? Yeah, I bet he barely cared about losing, that, losing this mill here. He just wanted those tier three out. And that yeah. Fox is going to come out before Stretch even gets there if he chooses to. Yeah, but the Owl is here for Stretch, which is a nice unit against the Fox. And the Wolf got Wait. blocked for a while. Stretch is taking that mill to just kind of tank and uh, plant his flag on the map a little bit. Also can heal his units up since this is now his territory. Even build some proxy warrens here. But yeah, that wolf timing, you know, the wolf didn't quite come out right when the fox did. So this fox has just been kind of sitting around doing nothing and here comes the mice.
Getting a lot of value there. What a great siege. Was Mouse doing so well against the mines plus the turret? Jace, hey, we've seen Jace come back from crazier. This is very true. And Jace needs to really make sure this fox gets the buff. That is the unit you want with that buff here. It just fires so fast, moves so fast. But again, the owl is kind of what. Oh no, the wolf goes down, which is oh, huge. No. And the owl does beat Fox nine times out of ten. All right, oh, so here, yeah, here, here's where the game starts. <laughs> yeah, his army is pretty slow, so he does have an opportunity here. Considering there are no units. Oh, is Jace just gonna win this? Man, he's got so many things to go through here. Ah, uh, but Stretch. Oh, Stretch does have the out. other mill though, in the middle of the map. Oh no. I don't think Stretch knows about the... Yeah, he doesn't know about the 9 o'clock base. So he's just not sure where the rest of Jace's uh, mills are at, but he could catch him, but... Oh, no. Is he turning around? Oh, man. Jace sneaking through. Yeah, he wants to go no. try to scout. All right. Stretch should be able to burrow. Oh, he can't burrow on the bridge. Are his units too far away? He's, he's running. Oh, he's trying to make mice. it back. The hero the mice. mice. <laughs> Oh, wow. The aggro distance on those mice is crazy. I think these mice are just going to chase. Okay, yeah, they will eventually die. Oh, the Falcons finished it off. Not today, Jace. You got a, you pulled a fast one earlier against Saint, but Stretch, but Stretch is starving. Okay, throws down a farm. Oh, man. Is Jace going to win okay. this somehow? Jace is building stuff on the back end, and he has the base over there. He has money for... One, maybe two, if he doesn't die. So Stretch really should have left something at home. Like, Jace doesn't have much food here to work with anyways, but even just like that owl to defend this one mill he's got. I, I oh my. Jace could do this, actually? Oh my god, these two, these lizard two lizards? Lizard. No. Oh man, oh, the <laughs> pig is there, defend pig. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, Jace, oh, Jace just stealing Jace victories, crazy. just stealing <laughs> victories all night long. Uh, that's hilarious. That's a lesson, a little bit of a lesson here, you know. I, I think Stretch had that in the bag, but he should have just kept a little bit at home to defend it. Two hero lizards coming back and ending the game there. <laughs> all right, a few more to get through tonight. I do actually have plans after this, so we gotta gotta keep it rolling. Gotta cool. got four more. Let's hop through them. Match number eight. Three, two, one, go. Okay, spawning in the right. We've got Vincent and his opponent to the left, Bratmo. All right, we got another Vincent versus Bratmo match for you tonight. Normally we just do. One, but I had a big backlog of them. Wanted to make sure we got to as many as we could. So we got double Vincent Bratmo action tonight. Owl Badger here from our red player. Meanwhile, Chameleon from our blue. Got some Toads here as well. And again, we see that Ferret Mine style going on. So I'm curious how that's going to work. Ooh, a little bit of a Mole attack here as well. As Bratmo, Bratmo doesn't know about it just yet. Unless he inferred it from uh, from the missing farm great distraction. He went up to the high ground, pulling Bratmo away from the north. Yeah, Bratmo knows it. something is up. Didn't spot it. So imagine this is the new patch. There'd be two moles right now. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah, you really gotta get your scouting going for the next patch. Oh, that's dead. Or you gotta have, like, MGs or, or something. Or, or just open, like, a 5 farm Warren. Chip used to do that a lot. He would he would just straight up blind open 5 farm Warren just to uh, be safe. I don't know if the mole, mole rushes are going to be that effective, but we will see. And what's interesting too is moles aren't in the position that they have been recently where it's like a core... Are, I, I think they're still probably fine, but they, it used to be like you never leave home without your moles, you know? They're just so strong. Uh, but since the nerfs, they're a little bit more of a niche unit which I kind of like, because now it's a little bit more of a commitment. Like, if you want to have that aggressive 4-5-5 five, five mole rush option available, 
you know, you got to give something up for it, you know? You know, in the very least, I'm excited to see that it it will be an option and an option that could pay for the mid game. Like, you know, uh, Vincent did get a war in there, but I think in the large scheme of things, didn't really do anything. Yeah. But considering the next patch, that might actually mean something. Ooh, actually something scary here. Vincent moving out while Bratmo's out, but... Yeah, I think Bratmo oh, could have... Oh, already... no! Oh, that's rough. Oh, yeah, he killed one mine, so... 60 for 20, but still a nice trade there from Finson. And on top of the, I think his, his mole rush was cost effective. So, Finson in a fantastic spot this game. Bratmo going to try to come back with some cams here. Uh, Bratmo is unaware of the base altogether to the south. Oh man, I was unaware of that base altogether. <laughs> He's even got four mines there. So lots of mines out on the map from Finson. A big uh, eco investment here. 200 food. Finson's gonna pull forward. Ooh. Oh, these uh, these squirrels are dinner here as these chameleons move forward. That was an engagement Bratmo needed for sure. How do you feel about these toads from Bratmo? Even though there are no lizards or yeah there are no lizards from so the Vincent. the one warren is, is kind of okay i suppose but the toads especially on this patch kind of serve two purposes one is anti-chameleon and one is anti-lizards like especially when you get into later game when you get like four six chameleons you know those toads can just uh, be really cost effective for sure but gotcha. vincent doesn't have chameleons or squirrels so yeah you're right he, he could have probably gone for some some different units here but I think three is okay. It's gonna be rough though. Will these even connect? One does. Yeah, actually, you get some okay value out of those. Trying to pull those cams back in the shadow. And double tier three here from Fencent. So let's see if Bramo is going to give him enough time. He's got the ferrets. This might have been a little bit too bold from Finson. I think he's trying to dunk on it on his opponent a little bit too much here. Because now the ferrets are here. Now we've got some chameleons. These are some decent mines. But the lizards are going to go off on him. And that wasn't a whole bunch of lizards anyway. So these chameleons really doing a good job cleaning up all those squirrels. And this is starting to look good for Bratmo. One owl is cooking. At this point, Vincent's just hoping for those owl, wow, owls. I wonder if he's considering maybe to sell one of them at this point. He's just going to be reinforcing for the better part of the next uh, look for those, a minute during this fight. Those chameleons, too, just right there on the choke. Uh, he's a little bit cocky there. Going to be a good toad hit. Oh, no. He gets How's he going to come up? Yeah, but Bratmo kind of overextended to get these warrens. And is he even oh! going to get it? No! <laughs> Wow. That was a little bit of a blunder there from Bratmo. He had the siege going nicely, but really overcommitted to get those Warrens. And unfortunately for him, the one Warren he did take was the one that wasn't building the Owls. So now Vincent is back in this. Owls are just so strong in these small numbers here. These free mice just make such a big difference, especially against the Toads too. Yeah, that's going to be... Man, that's going to be free trades every so often now. I mean, it's nice. People say it's nice to take care of the mice, but it's really not where you want it going. Yeah, toad versus mice is kind of interesting. Like, if you're really, uh, if you're just trying to bust through, you know, like kill all the mice and then win the game, it can be good. But over time, it's just very inefficient. But Bratmo's got a lot of powerful tier two here, and is pushed back against this owl. The owl's all fence and's got left. Committing to the mill here, not knowing that there's one to the south. It's still a nice pickup because that was a lot of Vincent's money, and Bratmo does have the better economy here. The owl's the only thing keeping Brat uh, Vincent in this. But Bratmo is a little bit uh, out of gas here. Gonna have to go home.
All right. Man, I thought Bratmo was about to end it right there. Does Bratmo even know about that south base? He does not. He doesn't even know Mill exists there. He's got a nice little- doing so much. These free units really, uh, <laughs> is paying for themselves? What? Yeah, but that's the only thing Finson has. He's got to be careful. He doesn't really have a whole lot to support it. Yeah, I yeah, think there's like every time he uh, Vincent sends him in like that, there is an opportunity like a counterattack is Bright Mode doing now to come in. Yeah, that was a hurry before those mice come back. That was a real smart them. pullback from Vincent after his mice were exhausted. And Bright Mode's going in. Another commitment. Uh, this could be a bad move. Yeah, I think he would have been better off just fighting the army there. Yeah. Ooh, and Vincent's going to pick up that ferret. That's huge. And poor Bright Mode does not know about the southern base and these extra two farms. Yeah, you sort of put yourself in this mindset, you know, Bratmo's sitting back thinking, oh, he's only on two or three farms, and really my opponent's on five. He's yeah. playing to that effect. Yeah, and he probably thought he was about to win the game there, too. That's why he committed. All right, here we go. These cams not doing too bad against the mice. Oh, yeah. I'd almost like to see the, the ferrets get sold off for, for more cams. All right, Bratmo's gonna go for it, maybe? Fencent is circling around. Bratmo did take another mill here, so he has the capability to base trade. Bit of, bit of hesitation, yep. Allowed Fencent to come a little bit closer to try for this trade. No doubt Bratmo will go south after destroying this base and seeing that he hasn't lost yet, but he has that base in the middle, so it's gonna be real hard for Fencent to do this. Yeah, Bratmo has no idea where the last base is. He's gonna have to figure it out very quickly. And he's gonna have to. Buy? Yeah. He's gonna have to deduce it's in this unscouted territory. He is gonna find it, but these <laughs> those mines take Ooh. out all the lizards. <laughs> That's gonna slow it down a little bit. Will these mice wait? Oh, they're gonna come over in time to defend. What a nice army split from Vincent. Oh, but is Bravo actually oh. gonna get it? He does. Damn. That was down to the wire there. Those those mines, man. Those mines were hype. Okay, we've got another 2v2. Let's hop into it. Are you ready? Do it. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> All right, in the bottom, we've got Epicosity and Heartseed. And their opponents up top, Blue Coon and Illuminatus. Rocking that Badger Fox. See a decent amount tier three. Oh, look at Heartseed's deck. That's pretty cool. Man, this is such a big open map, too, with a lot of different elevations, a ton of grist mills. So this could be an absolutely crazy game. Let's see. Actually, so far, no pre-eight uh, farm shenanigans here. Yeah. All players content to go straight to eight. We're gonna see that with the bottom team. Hmm. Going for that early second mill, maybe? Nope, just scouting it out. Yeah, eight farms from all players. Yeah, so we've kind of surprisingly got a nice little macro game on our hands. At least it seems like it's shaping up to be. Let's see where our opponents want to take it from here, or our contestants, I should say. Eight farm doubles uh, across the board. So kind of a gentleman's agreement here. A little bit of a handshake early game. This could shape up to be a very crazy macro match. Yeah, oftentimes, even with that previous 2v2 we saw, you know, one player somehow ends up getting behind and having to play catch up, but now Every player is equalized at the moment. I love this barbed wire here from Heartseed. Pretty cool placement. And as Premium Boat points out in the chat, yeah, the, the, the mill split is looking better for green and yellow. Oh my god, look at Blue Coon. Here comes Blue. Oh man, the barbed wire there. Just like, I don't think so, nerd. 
<laughs> we got a big engagement coming in the front, which is actually going to go well for red and blue because they get in a 2v1 situation. Man, that's hilarious because I was just thinking, like, oh, that barbed wire is in a cool spot, but will it ever be, be used? And, like, immediately it, it pays for itself <laughs> from denying that attack because, I mean, Blue Coon could have got in there and killed at least two pigs. And with them being out of position, like, Red and Blue take a really nice engagement here. So, man, these three, uh, these three pieces of barbed wire did so much this game. Yeah, and Blue went for... Is the only player that's gone for the tier two, so he didn't have as many tier ones as the others. So that's why uh, Eel lost a few uh, Warrens there. Here but comes now they're on the counter. Yeah, here comes the counter attack with the ferrets here, but that's so much tier one. The one thing oh, that we see, the ferrets we risk see like a counter use for these barbed wire here. Looks like they're a bit trapped behind their own. Yeah, the yeah, that barbed wire won't hurt the allied units, but it will slow them down, which uh, is, is pretty huge. And these ferrets are continuing to siege. I think this mill is for sure going to go down. They're content to let it instead of losing units to it. And Heartseed comes in with the flank attack. But Blue didn't quite move out in position at the exact right time. So Heartseed did pull back and it was it was decent. But now this is a little bit risky. Attacking into the Warrens here. This defender's advantage. Really nice for green and yellow. And they're going to the clean up shop for the moment. Yeah, I was pretty okay if they were just meaning to lose the mill and farm and farm there. True, uh, but then pushing in after losing it and losing all their units. Yeah, that's a really good point because it's like, oh, you know, we aren't gonna take the trade. You get the mill, but they they took the bad trade and lost the the mill. You know, yeah, the Bofa. Exactly. If they were gonna do it, they should have done it while the mill was still up. That's so many squirrels here from Eel. Twenty one. Great position for them. <laughs> Yeah, these ferrets really being rock stars this game. Jeez, that is just so much tier one. Epicosity trying to tech up here. Heartseed has a lot of money invested in defense, and Heartseed's just going to go on the counter attack here. He's got 12 lizards. Uh, I think he could have uh, targeted down the mill, but he gets a couple warrens and heads oh, home. Opportunity for a pincer here? He can retreat back through his own barbed wire. Lose a few. Oh! Blue coming inside. Man, I think Heartseed actually could have just knocked Blue Coon out. It would have been close. It was safer to get those Warrens. Uh, that, yeah, that was a little overextension there from, from Red. Ooh, and Blue is just out on the map. These Chameleons doing an okay job, but here comes this enormous force from Eel to just clean everything up. Blue is going to escape with a couple cams, which is nice. No second bases from anybody yet, so keep that in mind. I guess technically other than uh, Eel's base down there. Yeah. Next to the enemy. Here's another big engagement. The problem with having so many units like this and this awkward terrain is, you know, these squirrels got to find their own tile before they can shoot. So a lot of these squirrels just kind of marching around, not really even, even firing here. This balloon getting tossed down. This actual this tank mill over in the five o'clock starting to, to pay off here. Yeah, it looks like blue and eel have this, but Epicosity has the tier two advantage tremendously. So uh, a big fight. I mean, anything can happen in the big swing. But eel going for that fox. Yeah, it's going to be a long time coming for that, especially if they go into a fight. There's not a whole lot of money being thrown around right now. Yellow and green pushing forward. Do blue and red have enough to hold it, or is this just going to be GG? A lot of squirrels left over from Eel. Here's a skunk from blue, but it might be a little too late. Cam actually in there taking it out. Yeah, and that's going to be the tap out from blue and red. Nice victory there for Illuminatus and Blue Coon. All right, we got a couple more matches to end the night. I think this next one should be pretty good. Are you ready to hop into match number 10? Yeah. Let's do this. Three, two, one, go. <clears throat> 
In the bottom, we've got Kalaru and his opponent up top, Big Pimpintosh. Ooh, Kalaru's deck looks pretty cool. A little bit greedy on that tier two. He, he's kind of susceptible to lizards, which Tosh does have, you know. Doesn't have chameleons or mines or barbed wire or anything like that. Not We're, really the map for lizards though, unfortunately. It's just one large uh, hallway leading into Kalaru's oh, yeah. part of the map. Yeah, you're right, look at this. Kalaru's just got three bases in series here, heading over to the three o'clock, really four. Like, this spawn is so crazy for Kalaru if this game goes long. You know, he just expands linearly out. There's only one attack path for four bases. That's insane. Yeah. And then he can take a fifth and a sixth here and still basically have, like, one arc. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tosh has got a natural, and that's it. <laughs> like, uh... Thankfully, this isn't as bad as it looks because, you know, it, it's very... I don't want to say easy, but, you know, Tosh can be flexible and can look at the map and say, you know, I can't let this be, this game go on for too long, which is probably his plan anyways. He's got the fox, so probably what he wants to do is take up to like a half-saturated second base, try to get that fox more in and, and use that to pressure his way to a victory. But interestingly enough, Tosh takes this, uh, oh, he's going to put a balloon down. Yeah, oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. If Kalaru doesn't see this coming. All right. Now, if Kalaru is super on point, he might notice that there's some food missing. Because technically Tosh should have another 60 food out. Very good job from oh, Kalaru there. It's a great scout too. He can call over his units and... Wait, is he going to... Oh yeah, he should have rallied his units right there. Yeah, huh. While he was up, he probably didn't now even think about it. it. Ooh, that was... Yeah, that was a mistake from Kalaru. He could have just hit that uh, rally button and those squirrels would have taken that balloon out. He probably was just... Uh, Freaking out a little bit, didn't think about it, and this balloon is just gonna get uh, oodles of value. Two pigs, a squirrel, oh, and meanwhile, here come the lizards nice. from Tosh, picking up another pig. This will be shut down as Kalaru's own balloon does give vision, but very good balloon play there from Tosh, definitely worth. Now Tosh is going to take his proper expansion. And Kalaru is going to see this. Kalaru does have a, a the second base up and running. Couple of pigs. I was going to say an eco advantage, but since Tosh killed three farms there with that balloon, you know, it kind of mitigates it. Opting to go for more balloons. Hmm. It's a lot of a money investment for static defense. Yeah, it is 240 bucks there. And it's going to put Kalaru on the back foot. And if Tosh scouts this out, he should have no problem just going straight up to a lot of farms. But maybe Kalaru can do something cool, like get a wolf out of this. I'm not so sure. He is going to get the ferrets, which is cool. He's going to be able to just take that base out for free without getting yeah. out of position. But if you're Tosh and you see your opponent's got double balloons here, I mean, he's already getting a really fat economy. Yeah, now he sees that second balloon, he's like, fine. I'll go home and, and take eight farms. Or no, he's going to look for an opening, but that doesn't wow. connect quite around. Nice sell. Oh, but the squirrels, I didn't even notice them. All right, that wasn't as bad as it could have been. Yeah, I think I would have liked to have seen a, a wolf or something with those double balloons. And ferrets can shoot so far when they get granted additional vision. Uh, there's no way to counter this. He doesn't have any range for that. Yep, slowly but surely, this Gris Mill will fall to the ferret siege. I guess he could have uh, placed you know, a balloon in each corner, potentially save it from the ferret harass, but I think he sort of cut his losses there. Don't invest too much in that far base. Yeah. Well, and a lot of money's going huge into lizards. Five warns down at once. Six! 
Yeah, this makes sense. I mean, units like ferrets and falcons and balloons are not what you want against lizards. And here comes Tosh for the big engagement. The skunk's trying to help get something done here, but the lizards are just so fast, they don't necessarily have to stand in that skunk gas and take a whole bunch of damage like squirrels do. And plus, Tosh has four of his own skunks, so four skunks and as many lizards as you can get your hands on to back it up. Ooh, that base goes down. All right, so Kalaru is claiming a few little vicarious victories here, but I feel like he needs a lot more squirrels. Yeah, the, ooh, this is going to be a tough hold if uh, Tosh comes in with all these lizards. Putting down that fox warren, selling one of his tier twos. Nice, nice. Does Tosh even really need it at this point, though? And the balloons are good against the fox. But he could probably find somewhere to, to get in and get some value with it. The balloons are really all Kalaru has outside of the wolf that's good against the fox. So uh, beyond that, he can pretty easily you know, come up here and try to snipe off the falcons you know, as he can and that sort of thing. It looks like Tosh is trying to set up for a base race. Oh, is that balloon still spotting that mill? Yeah, dude, the, the vision wow. from balloons is ridiculous. All right, Tosh is thinking about it. I like the patience here from Tosh because he knows Kalaru can't come out of his little um, hallway here. And I think the second that Kalaru does come out, Tosh is gonna have the huge advantage. I think if he just keeps to this defensive play, takes these, two positions and force Kalara to come out, he's good. Especially with the uh, fox in the open field. All right, Kalara spots that fox, but he spots it so late, I'm not sure what he can really do about it. I'm really surprised he, he never tried to squeeze out a wolf here. It just seems like it would be so perfect. Finally, a wolf comes down, but it might be too late. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't believe, like, look at Kalara's vision. That's that balloon gives them, you know? I think that's insane. Yeah, this might be the opportunity here that Tosh needs to see attack this position, but it's getting up. Double balloon, He's about too. To lose that. He's about to lose it. It's opportunity. Triple balloon. Triple balloon. Oh, here Tosh comes. And Kalara wasn't in position on the front lines, the micro from the beginning, but he's here now. So much skunk gas everywhere. So much gas. And is Kalaru actually holding this? The fox goes down. Oh, good focus fire just pulling through, but <laughs> might have been too much. Yeah, Tosh has enough left over to, to start rampaging through. That one HP Falcon. Oh man, is Kalaru going to have enough reinforcements? He does for the time being. Now you got to think about what you want to sell off. Again, that, that wolf is just not going to happen. Maybe he's going to try for it. He's going to have to sell off a little more than that. Does Tosh, uh... No, Tosh is banking up for another fox. I think he slimmed down on his lizards a little bit. Yeah, I think in these circumstances, when you're starting to go down an eco, these tier 1 armies definitely outweigh the tier 2. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really surprised Tosh decided to try to get another fox out here. But he's got plenty left over. To continue to press in. Now he's gonna come home and sell that Warren. I get it, you know, wishful thinking. But in the end, he realized, all right, I just need as much as I can get right here, right now. Throwing down a tank Warren might even take a balloon if he's uh, feeling up to it there. Tosh does need to be careful. He is down, but man, those numbers are overwhelming at the moment. So much skunk gas here for Kalaru, but these falcons in the sky, surprisingly, oh. Kalaru is able to hold up this off. Yeah, he pushed through to kill that balloon on the back line, so he lost a bit of DPS there. Ah. Uh, I'm surprised this tier 2 warrant up front lived, too. Look at this reinforcement. More lizards already here. However, what Kalaru's Kalar got is not terrible. You know, these skunks are really making a difference here, as well as the falcons. What's he doing? Ooh, yeah. Tosh just didn't have the numbers 
to make a big commitment like that. And now Kalaro's gaining some confidence here. Now that he's been able to stockpile up all these tier 2 units, he's really starting to position himself for a comeback. Probably wants to get these things healed up and then maybe try for a big engagement. Now Kalaro, oh, he's got this one farm still left. Nice. I was going to say he's going to have to take a mill to stop from starving, but no. Had one farm left. Meanwhile, Tosh is going to have to take a mill to stop from starving, so... He's going to have to sell off a Lizard Warren or maybe the Falcons or something, so... Somehow, some way, this is starting to look advantageous for Kalaro. Tosh is... Just going to commit? I think he realized he doesn't have time. Yeah, Tosh has kind of got one last hurrah on him. 30 seconds left. Ooh, those Falcons get caught out of position. That's a good start for Tosh. He surrounds the entire army. And the Lizards are going to make it through. Oh my god, is Tosh going to win this? He's got 20 seconds. 20 the seconds. The Falcons here in the back. The health DPS is down and Kalaru taps. Wow. <laughs> I can't believe that army won that last engagement. The uh, Falcons getting caught out a little bit there. Kind of sealed the deal there for Tosh. Yeah, I was worried there a couple moments for Tosh, sort of uh, blowing his half army tier ones into the tier twos. But that time, you know, waiting till he got that full um, you know, amount of tier one and then going into that tier two army. But close. Good play from both players. All right, we got one last game for you tonight, guys. Again, thanks for tuning in on such short notice. I think we had a really good turnout for me just randomly saying a couple hours ago, hey, I'm streaming. <laughs> so th <laughs> thanks everybody for showing up again i do need new patch replays shoot those over to me tooth and tail tv at gmail.com and we will be back here tomorrow for the start of the big tournament let's hop into this last game maybe ultima are you ready for one more let's do it three two one go spawning in the bottom right we've got mochino and his opponent to the left the one stretch. Very similar decks here. Only difference is Owl versus Can uh, Skunk. So Mochaccino going a little bit more for this mid gamey approach. He does have the Falcons, which or the Lizards, to be honest, that can scale nicely into the late game. But I think if you're Mochaccino with this comp, you're looking for some real strong two base play. Meanwhile, the stretch again, you know, he's got a really solid lineup, and then he's got the Owls as kind of the icing on the cake if the game goes too long. And uh, kind of an awkward spawn here for Mocha. He's got the real big decision ahead of him of where he's gonna start taking out, or where he's gonna start expanding here. Yeah, I, I guess maybe south? Like, I don't know, maybe north is better, just because of the way the ramps are. Like, if you're Mocha Chino, do you just start setting up kind of next to this pond here in between those two bases you know between like the one o'clock and, and his home base at three and maybe start trying to claim this area this is this is definitely tough i think the uh stretch here you know taking that natural on the high ground seems like a good move and he looks like he's already setting up for that a little bit from that those warren placements yeah great placements there Ooh, mocha chino like, uh, mocha wants to take that middle ground too maybe he sees the uh, opportunity here. If whoever takes that mill gun essentially will have the rest of the map. Yeah, I think Mochaccino is kind of calling out the stretch here as he's placed his Warrens with the shortest rush distance. The way that stretch placed his Warrens is not safe. He doesn't have the pigs to back him up. However, as long as both players keep building tier 1, this is even. And Squizzard should beat straight up Squirrels most of the time it still does come down against the engagement concave versus convex how many units got to shuffle around to find a tile before they start shooting but on paper i'd, I'd favor squizzard and he's got the mill here to tank something that's dangerous about it really feels that he needs to break out of this yeah, good control there by Stretch. One thing that is dangerous about Squizzard is if your Lizards engage before the Squirrels do, you know? But Stretch did a good job holding them back until the Squirrels were in position. And gets a nice uh, little early game victory here. And starting to move in. Getting a Warren, that's huge. Ooh. 
Locacino needs to be careful, but the way that he positioned his warrants, he's a little bit committed here. And this is just a big tier one game. Uh, pretty bold from Stretch to take that farm. However, I guess he did kill the Warren. I think he took the trades a little more favorable, so he might be up about 120 food anyways. So this is just going to compound that, that lead. Now that Mochaccino went for a tier two, uh, taking a couple farms is a little bit safer. But Stretch still doesn't know about that tier two coming. Uh, looks like Mocha might be going for an all-in one base of some kind. Opting not for the second base at this point. Yeah. Unless he's really just trying to show up his army. I don't hate it. Four cams is, is pretty good. So maybe he's just... Oh, but he's not in position. Stretch with some good game sense here. Moving out when Mochaccino is just not ready. However, Mochaccino still got the defender's advantage here fighting in the Warrens. However, three Warrens went down. Big victory here for Stretch. If Mokushino can get something done with this counterattack, that would help, but just going to take it back for the time being. Okay, so Stretch is going to scout this base up top. But now Mochaccino's got four cams, and four cams is no joke, especially on this patch. Like, this army for Mochaccino's huge. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we see him just smash through here. Let's find out. The big engagement comes down. Only one cam from Stretch's side. Yeah, and these four cams in the front just dominating, and now this second base is going to go down. Oh, no, it stays alive. All the cams did fall for Mochaccino. Yeah, opting to target switch back to the tier two instead of taking the base. Hmm. Army splitting as lizards up top. Opportunity potentially Ooh. to take out the base. Yeah, and nice. He's gonna get it. Yeah, nice idea on paper from Stretch, but he wasn't at home to Micro's units, and Mochaccino took that as an opportunity to come in and gank that expansion and get out. Nicely done there. Though Mocha is severely behind in terms of army now. And cannot reinforce nearly as much as Stretch. Yeah, Stretch has taken some pretty good fights throughout the game. But still trying to attack into all these Warrens is difficult for him. I like the idea of, of sending up the Lizards to deal with his top base, but putting yourself out of position like that could could really be lethal. So we're at a little bit of a standstill here. Stretch did manage to get his second base back up and is going to try to cement this victory with a eco lead here. We're well past the five minute mark, so the only income here is from the second base. Mochaccino going to try to squeeze out his own second farm. Oh, these cams out in the, the middle. Actually, those flanking cams from Mochaccino got a lot done. Damn, this is actually pretty neck and neck here. As Mochaccino moves forward, trying to get some more damage in. Oh, this, wow. might, this might be it. That was a really good engagement there from Mocha. Good job targeting down the opponent's cams. Yeah, it's almost like Mocha saved his chameleons until the right moment. Uh, the stretch pushed, pushed in for a little bit there. Eh, and each sort of HP point means a lot here. Yes, absolutely. And, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. We got through 12 replays. That was actually most of the submissions I had, so I'm happy about that. We got to most things. From now on, we will be doing shows on the latest and greatest patch. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in as always and we will be back here tomorrow night uh for the beginning of the championship so i'm super hyped for that man we've got some ooh, ooh, who do we got do we got any old names in there let me see real quick i know mishi's playing that, that's old enough right 
James, Clark, Iris. Iris is coming back for it. I'm trying to think. Jet Erickson, of course. Jet's been around forever, and he's just like always been active. Kerpa. Kerpa's still been pretty pretty active lately, though. Yeah, I think Mishi. Mishi is the one that I'm I'm kind of hyped to see. We have a, we actually have a lot of new players too, which is awesome. The I was a little bit worried about the different divisions, but everything filled out like really nicely. So I am super hyped, man. And I think having the the beginners division really helped uh, players not be shy about joining. You know, because we do have a small community here, so. When you join a tournament and somebody like the gentleman or this guy just just wrecks everybody, you know that's not as fun. But when you're against other players of your own skill level, it's uh it's more entertaining. So current it encourages you to come back and play again. Yes, sir. But all right, guys, that's it. Continue sending me replays. We'll be back tomorrow night with the uh, three best of fives from the Premier League, and that is all. I think Jacket Man's a, a tooth and tailor. Let's give him a raid. Not sure what he's up to, but let's go say hi. And we will see you all at 6 p.m. EST tomorrow. Take care, everybody. Let me stop this Steam stream. How do I do that? Do, 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 do. Yeah, hopefully you can figure out the whole store page thing tomorrow for tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Stop. There we go. See you, everybody.